tinfoil hat. Oh, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? Global controls will have to be imposed. And a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Welcome to tinfoil hat. We, we, we go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Good morning, Swarm, and welcome to Tim Fall Hat. You know I am. You know I'm here to do. I'm here to... Uh, Join me as always, Xavier Guerrero, and on the ones and twos, Jay Nice, Juicy Johnny, J Dog, Johnny Wooder. Just going with that now, huh? Yeah, guys. Hey, real quick, go to samtriplet.com, check out my dates. Morris Plains this weekend, then Flagstaff, Tucson, El Paso. Then I, I'm going to be hopefully in Florida for the Chaos Winds live signing at the at the joint joint joke. Jo you know what I'm talking about? The joint. The joke joint. There we go. Then I have other dates coming up, so check those out. And that's it, guys. Let's get into it. I am very... Oh, yeah. Real quick, I want to thank everybody who came out to the special Woo! Crush Fest 2024. Killed. As always, Killed. kills. People standing up. You are... We, we worship you. I'm like, I'm just a, a dick joke comic. <laughs> Don't worship me. My girl said it was the best comedy she'd ever heard in her entire life. Oh, thank life. you. Yeah. It's between what, me and Matt Reif? Was that the fight? <laughs> yeah, no, she hasn't seen him yet, okay, thankfully. Okay, I would okay. never okay. let that happen. Okay. I'm not stupid. Yeah, good hey, call, yeah, you good don't want to lose your girlfriend. No, no, Anyways, no. enough with the with that. Let's get into it. We're very excited to have them back. They are OGs of the Tim Fall Hat Podcast. I think they've uh, been on a bunch of times, and it's been way too long. We love them. Their podcast is called Grimerica. Please welcome Grant Dunlop and Darren Grimes. How are you guys? Hey, we're doing good. Thanks for having us on. Well, I always love talking to you guys, whether it's uh, on Tim Fall Hat, you know, the Wanted, uh, whenever, every time. Very excited. For those who don't know or didn't listen to your past episodes, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and where our listeners can find you? Well, everything is at Grimerica.ca, really. We've got uh, a link to our audiobooks there. We've got Grimerica Outlawed, which we're doing uh, another a new weekly show where we talk about sort of Canadian sort of topics, new stuff. And uh, Grimerica Outlawed is another, yeah, there's our website there. And then Grimerica Outlawed is, uh, you know, another interview show that gets a little deeper, more controversial. The one you're looking at right there is a little bit more sort of, it's pretty casual, you know, sort of ancient mysteries and UFOs and all that kind of stuff. We kind of tried to separate out the, the real serious stuff with no, our original kind of platform, you yeah. know? Yeah, you got to say the day. So there's safe, dangerous, and then there's dangerous, yeah. dangerous. This exactly. Is dangerous. This is dangerous, and right? It, and there's a huge overlap, right? But then, yeah, that's the one there that we get into uh, into the, the good stuff. Am I, I, am I going to be worried about you guys uh, with these new laws that Canada is just going for? Like, what is going on, bro? I guess we'll see. I mean, I guess we'll see what happens. I don't, uh, I don't expect the current government to be around for a whole lot longer. I don't know how much the conservative government will actually take back when they do take power. But yeah, it's getting a little weird up here. But on the plus side, the the division between the east and the west is kind of not even the west because the west is kind of lost. So in Canada, we just kind of assume BC is lost, and then. It's kind of like Alberta and Saskatchewan are the West, or we get called the West. And the rest of the country is the East. And uh, the dividing lines are deep, and they just kind of keep getting deeper. So um, hopefully we could get into some sort of situation where we could maybe not even identify as Canadian anymore. It is... How does that sound? I would. That's not something I would have been like, happy to say 20 years ago i'm with you dude i'm with you it's it's getting crazy here and you know i, I i'm blessed to perform in canada a lot i went a couple you know the, during the covid years i didn't go there and it sucked and i went back and you know i just played edmonton and i had people coming up to me after just tell me horror stories 
of what they went through because they one they didn't want to take the shot and two they were trying to warn people about the shot like a woman came up to me and she was like i had people outside my i had cops sitting on my lawn harassing me my neighbors were harassing me and it's just kind of crazy because you know canada forever was like there was like i had always had some jealousy of like because I would go there and it was just like they were all happy people. I'm like, wow, this is what happens when you don't spend 50 cents of every dollar on the military industrial complex. and You could actually take care of yourself. And I, I know your health care is like it's changing and there's more chaos. But I'm just going to be honest with you, man. You go to Canada, they're way more healthy. Because at this moment there, and, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but... If you if you look at the way their insurance, uh, their health care is, it's about saving cost, not making money off of sickness. So, you know, you go up there, everyone's got beautiful skin. It's like crazy to me as you, you know, you go through America and you're like, everybody here is unhealthy. And it's, it's that because they spread us so thin and we have to work so much that we don't get time to eat properly. And it's just crazy to me. And so I just don't know what is going on up there. It's like... And then people tell me all the time, they're like, it's Toronto, bro. Toronto basically fucks everything up and it gets into like all this biblical shit where you start talking about, you know, Babel and, the, you know, this city where we weren't supposed to, they invented bricks or and cement and, you know, now they started building these buildings that are really big. And I'm like, dude, are we supposed to live in these big cities where they can just can totally, totally control us? through this like kind of um mental blackmail of like oh if you express thoughts we don't like you don't get promoted in your corporate job in these giant corporations so everyone has to bend over backwards uh to show that they're compliant with and conforming to the group thing because then they won't get promoted well back to the healthcare question it's definitely not the healthcare man our healthcare systems are falling apart up here it's really it's okay if you like break your leg or something you know hopefully that doesn't happen or you know they they'll probably get you in pretty quick but some parts of canada you know if you go into the emergency room and it's considered non-life threatening you know you're waiting for like days man days well, was it ever was doctor. it ever as was it ever as good as they say it was? You know, like back in, I mean, I heard it was great. Like, oh, dude, the healthcare over there, you go in there, you can pretty much, you can get a be fucking a uh, breast implants, basically. Like, they're they probably, were giving you anything. But, like, was it ever that good? Time. No, well, not in my lifetime, but I'm sure there was a time when it, like, first started where there wasn't enough weird sort of experimental stuff that, because the problem is now is it's just kind of doesn't cover anything sort of, that actually works you know it's just sort of very <laughs> pharmaceutical based and very like my my thing is if i had need emergency care i'll probably go to the hospital and everything else anything sort of long term i'm probably going to deal with you know in other ways because uh you know we our thing in canada is we have a ton of people that'll go to the states for life saving saving surgeries on this that or the other because either a the canadian health care system won't perform it or B, um, it can't. Not it. It can't, or it's not covered, or it's like, yeah, it's just, yeah. But that's a good question, though. I mean, I think it was better probably in the '90s. I think it's worse now than it's ever been with the, with the mandates. I mean, in BC, they've they've still they're still keeping thousands and thousands of nurses away from the hospitals. Their emergencies are overrun. People are fed up with the doctors. The doctors have to really follow this really strict protocol. Yeah, yeah. The, the college, the college and the national health care is very much like if you have COVID, you can't go anywhere but the hospital and you have to get remdesivir and a ventilator. There's no other options for you here. Yeah. I mean, oh, and like the remdesivir is so insane. It's like, so uh, I was watching this. There was a time where 60 Minutes did great news, did great reporting. And I don't know what happened, but I guess it's like when Bill Clinton deregulated the media, 60 Minutes lost its dick, and, you know, now it's now it's just garbage. But, uh, you know, they... Well, I, it was probably... Oh, I don't think we could ever count on that. Any of that shit was real, man. I don't think we could take that for granted. I think we just didn't have the mechanisms to know any better. I, I understand what you're saying, but there are times where I go, Wow! 
That's a real story right there. And th there's two times when they interviewed uh, this Boston lawyer who was investigating who brought all the Nazis to America. And it was like, this was some, this is like, you know, like, you know, the conservatives in America, some of them think like Richard Nixon got a bad rap. And then you hear this story and you're like, no, he was straight on part of a, a group of like three people who brought in uh, all the Nazis to America. And then the other one was when you watch 60 Minutes Swine Flu. Uh, well, I mean, it is, it, they get the guy, like they get the Fauci almost at that, that time who was in charge of rolling out the swine flu. And they are grilling this guy going, where were the tests? I, oh, there were no tests. Uh like all the stuff they pulled. This is giving me like right. Vice. Vice, like what Vice gave me when I was a young. When I would watch Vice, I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe they're yeah, showing us yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. And now it's like dog shit, which I'm feeling. This is like the same thing happened with 60 Minutes, I mean, dude, where it this was great. Story is so nuts. It's so nuts to watch. I, I mean, well, it's they've always been puppets for the state. The only difference is that now pharma take is is like a real player. Like pharma is influencing the media at such a level that now that's untouchable but i mean make mo no mistake at that same time there was just a bunch of other third rail shit there was just a bunch of other stuff you weren't going to hear about you know no i'm with you on that farmers just on that list now because you know they got there with money they just bought it all via advertising which you know really was kind of genius i mean well dude uh you break down basically uh fractional reserve banking and if it wasn't so evil it it's the most brilliant shit you've ever heard in your life let's create at the time ten dollars for every one dollar and then we make to take this ten dollars and then we just corrupt the entire system with this monopoly money that isn't even real and everyone sells their soul out sells their children's generation out don't give a shit and those are the psychopaths. I had a buddy of mine, you know, we're not as close as we used to be. Uh, and I was bringing up about all the crazy shit that's coming down the line that's going to, that is going to basically f screw our children over. And he goes, how long will this take? I go, could be now, could be a decade. He goes, well, could I be dead by then? And he goes, yeah. I go, yeah. He goes, well, then I don't care. You know, and it's like, damn, bro. That's psychopath to me, knowing you're setting your kids up. Yeah. But that's that's just what they did. So it is pretty crazy. Real quick, you guys have a new audio book series I want to get into real quick. Uh, oh, yeah, that's our that's our new website. Um, we also have a YouTube channel. Darren can talk a little bit about this. He's been building this channel. But, uh, yeah, you want to get into that, Darren? Well, this is just all our audiobooks because we used to have, I mean, we've been doing audiobooks for years and the collection has been slowly building up, but we were exclusive to Audible for a long time. So we were just sort of uploading them and signing a deal with Audible and they were for sale there only. And then we kind of falling out with them. <laughs> it's just one of the sort of many places we've been canceled from. Um, and really the... Yeah, I don't want to get into all that right here, but, you know, we got canceled from Audible, so we got back into it through a new distributor, um, and we were able to get some stuff back in Audible as well um, through the new distributor, but at a much lower royalty rate, unfortunately. But it gave us the ability to do all these other things with our audiobooks. So we've got over 100 and we've got them, you know, we've got a podcast. You can find us in all podcast feeds where we've got a podcast sort of model to to get them. And we've also got now a YouTube channel where you can get them for free. But it just, you know, it's you, you they get out a little slower there. They're free. They've got ads in them, obviously. That's how we make money. And they come out slower because, you know, we're sort of releasing them on a schedule. A video, uh, video three days a week, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, and so it's we've got a ton of content to get through because a lot of these books are thirty hours plus, so they take several videos to complete a book. So we'll I be love kinda it, dude. Do you guys do all the? Do you guys do the, the talking for the audiobooks? 
Adult Brain, it's called? I uh, Yeah, Adult Brain, yeah. Adult Brain Audiobooks, and there's a podcast feed, too, and all that. Yeah, I do most of the narration. We've had some other guest narrations as well, some other people doing them. I mean, we'd like to get more eventually once we start getting uh, back to where we were. Like, we're still sort of climbing from that... Uh, from that collapse after we got sort of canceled there so that's hard work but, I mean, huh? i've heard that's a slog there oh is. yeah it can be it can be yeah there's been some great but now but now the strategy is different because before we kind of worried about what was on audible but now we can just do like bestsellers because we've got it on our channel on the podcast now we can put it everywhere too right so now we can do like bestsellers that might already be on audible you know like uh What's a good example there? Like Siddhartha, the one about Buddha. Like that's, many people have done that, but we're going to yeah. put it in our library, you know? But there's another one like that Autonomous Zone one there, Taz. That's like an ontological anarchy book that's super popular. Moonchild from Aleister Crowley there is a, a fiction one. The Code of the Illuminati's, that one from the late 1700s, they were talking about the structure of the Illuminati and she thinks, or he thinks, I keep thinking Abbe is a, is a woman, but he thinks that they caused the French Revolution. You know, there's, all these cool old books that um, that you know we're we're getting out there on audio for people. Rudolf Steiner, H.G. Wells, Margaret Sanger, Charles Fort. You know a lot of kind of ancient mysteries as well. Super interesting. Well, I'm following you right now. I just joined. I'm going to follow. I love. I want to listen to more books. I just like. I can't listen to. Oops, sorry guys, I just followed Don't you. start now. Yeah, <laughs> guys, wait, wait come, come back in an hour after I listen a little bit. Um, uh, so yeah, man, you guys are doing the Lord's work. I, I, you guys are what I dream of doing sometimes is organizing and creating like this important content. And I think it's, I love that you're taking these books that maybe people wouldn't know about yeah. and uh, putting them out and making it so people could, could, could hear them. And I'm one of those people where I retain way more knowledge hearing it than actually reading it that's who yeah. i am so i'm excited for that man and uh i'm excited about the youtube channels you guys get it for free it doesn't cost you nothing you could just go there there's a bunch of great books there already a bunch of napoleon hill stuff levatsky manly p hall and it's all there for free um you just have to put up with a little five second ad like one an hour it's really nothing and you can get all that content for free you know, because we get it, times are tight. So, and then of course, if you go to the website, it's got all the different ways to get it. You can get the podcast, or you can buy them any place you buy audiobooks just by typing in adult brain into the search bar. Well, I love it. And I think it's great. So, you guys, so what happened? Audiobook was audible. Well, and, that, and that's Amazon, right? Yep. Amazon was like, hey, no more talking about these ancient wisdom books. We don't want to hear that. And I get that because, you know, just like our past episode that we just put out before this, you know, I mean, they just want to reset everything all the time. They don't want you having any of the knowledge. They want all the knowledge for them and their offspring, and they don't want you to have any of it. They want you to only know what is current things. And that's why I think what you guys are doing is so important. And it doesn't surprise me that the guy whose grandfather started DARPA is now trying to control information. It's crazy to me. And like, like there's, a, it's like a certain level of, of Zen that you have to get to in your life where you're like, even if I don't agree with something, I have to defend the right to say it. And I think that's really lost today in, in on both sides, whether it's the right or the left, you know, it's like, so, you know, the left has been taking it in the B all the time because they make this stance and then they sell out the other side. And then when they come for them, they have no real footing. And I see it happen on the right too. You know, we'll get into it. if you're, if you're like, Hey dude, I think you, the government should tell you, you should have to get uh, a vaccine. Well, you, you, you don't believe in body autonomy. Well, this is different. No, it's really not. So now when they come after road versus Wade, Roe versus Wade, you have no, no place to stand on. Like, I don't even get to the discussion. The government doesn't tell you what to do. Babies are blessings. If God gives you a child, you should bring that child in. But you can't. Uh, you can't make fine print when it comes to the government because they will use that law against you at some point. Because, I mean, if you want to think about it, like, you're a Christian, you believe in God, and you shouldn't stand on, on that anymore. Right. 
But it makes sense because it's my body. You, you don't tell nobody what to do with their body, period. I yeah. don't even go into. And I lose people on this, but that, yeah. that's you have to do that. Yeah, we were just I'm reading saying. in Ontario right now. The, the, uh, we're going to probably talk about it tonight on our Roundup episode. We're, we're sort of accumulating all this Canadian content, and it's crazy. It's crazy up here. There's so many people waking up just from the stuff that the government's actually doing. It's not even conspiracies that are, or COVID that are waking people up now. It's the, it's the economy and the crazy stuff that the government's overreaching on. So in Ontario, your kids, there's like 18,000 kids that need to, to sign their vaccination. They need to update their vaccination records for the schools to go back to school. And, and they, the, the parents can fill out a, um, an exemption form, but they have to take vaccine propaganda training. I mean, this is where we're at in Canada. And now this new hate speech law where Crazy. you can't, uh, you, you know, the hate speech thing is going to get you in trouble now. I mean, holy, it's, it's, it's really starting to creep in and affecting us like it never has. You know, I think back in the 90s, it's so, we were so free back then, you know, it's, we didn't oh, realize yeah. it. but Bro, we were, we were free. We were free seven years ago. Like the internet seven years ago? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm like, let's say, not even, almost nine years ago. Think about that, 2015. How amazing was the internet? Like, you probably get- even a little before that. I would say like 2014. Like, with that's kind of what we've seen is the right around mid 2015 is probably when it is. It's almost like I right the, when Trump I think the internet out. started sucking when it became part of the iPhone, when it became part of the phone. It was still cool when you had to go on your uh, your computer. At your house and log in and go to like yahoo.com. No, no, I disagree with that because then none of us are doing what we're doing right now. You know what I mean? We're all back to fucking work, dude. Nine to five, motherfucker. Or doing comedy. I mean, that's a less nine to five thing. But I bet you, you guys would both say that the internet has had a pretty great effect. No, I agree with that. I agree. I, I, so I put that time where Sam puts it. I mean, we were starting and, and there was this what before the algos started targeting things which honestly seemed to be around the time Trump started running or becoming president. I mean, that's probably yes. 2015, probably nails it. That's when the culture was started dividing. And that's before that it was kind of the heyday when you could make money, be discoverable. And if you're willing to put in the effort, you can make money online. And, you know, that's a lot harder of a thing to do now, like you're um, so depending right. on what you're doing. But you know, the internet is definitely, I would say the worst is before that, because the nineties you were free in a different way, but you weren't free to really work yet, dude. You weren't even working from home. You were fucking working, go to the job, fucker, get down to the site, do this, do that. The options for us to, you know, that all of us in this conversation are enjoying right now for livelihood are have grown kind of exponentially. If they would have just let them keep going, you know, I like we'd be in a in a different place today. And I think or at least I'm starting to see some inklings that the pendulum is is coming back. In our oh, day. yeah. Guys, I want to tell you about our friends at Copy My Crypto. That's right. James Man and Copy My Crypto. Let me tell you about it. Has it pissed you off to watch crypto fly up in prices for over a decade and you still done nothing about it? It makes sense. Crypto is complicated and it's really boring. Well, here's the good news. You don't have to know a thing about crypto to make money like so many have. The CopyMyCrypto.com membership site shows you the exact cryptos that YouTube's James McMahon personally owns, which means you just copy them. It's like having a big brother who, who knows what he's doing. You don't need to know a thing about crypto or how to invest as you sit simply copy along so let me tell you more about james he runs crypto with james youtube channel which has over fifty-four thousand subscribers congrats james in the summer of 2020 he told his viewers to buy 26 cryptos had you put in a hundred bucks into each one it went on to be worth over one hundred twenty-three thousand dollars. damn dude Of the 26 cryptos, his top pick of the year, the one he singled out called Phantom, went up 692 times from when he said. That one call has retired a number of people, including guys in their 20s and 30s. Remember, this is public knowledge. You can go to YouTube and verify this yourself. So if you'd like to join the 2,800 members who copy James, then pause what you're doing and head over to 
CopyMyCrypto.com slash TFH. That's CopyMyCrypto.com forward slash TFH. That's TFH. You'll not only find proof of everything I've said, but my viewers get full access for just a buck. One dollar. Yes, you've missed out on Bitcoin. But there's over 2 million other cryptos. Do you really think you've missed out on all of them? Guys, don't waste any more time. Go to the site and read it. Once again, that's copymycrypto.com slash TFH. It's ended money worries for so many. It may just do the same for you. Copymycrypto.com. I mean, you guys are right in line with what Mike Ben said on Tucker. I just listened to that today, finally. And he said, right where you guys were talking about the iPhone coming up, like that's the end of one internet generation. It was like 95 to 2006 or something like that. And then 2007 to 14, you know, and then now it's it's changed. Right now we're in the last sort of stage where all that, the algorithms started, you know, clamping down and, and all that changed. But there was like a, you know, an area in there when the smartphones sort yeah, of started. Yeah, because the first one was hard to monetize. That yeah. first era was hard to monetize. Everyone thought it was going to be great, and then everyone went broke. Yeah, I'm with you on that, and I do believe, you know, it's very interesting because I do believe that Hillary and this 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 desire to have power at all cost really just exposed everything that was going on, and it was a real wake up time to go. Oh, oh, we've been being lied to, and you know what? You know what that reminds me of Vietnam. And the last time that people kind of came together and was anti-establishment and they were like, whoa, 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 people have gotten too smart and they know what we're up to. This is total bullshit. We have to clamp down. So that that's when you started seeing the beginning of like the destruction of public education. We were no longer wanting to educate you, but we wanted to brainwash you in the things we wanted you to believe in, which was whatever we tell you. That so, ties into the news thing, too, you mentioned earlier, because it was the media showing body bags for the first time and war right. and color that led to Vietnam, you know, becoming so unpopular on the home front, at least partly. Uh, other than, you know, and the other obvious thing is that everybody knows somebody that just died in this pointless war. Yeah. But uh, that's, uh, yeah, I mean, it is, those were in some ways freer times and in some ways less so. Uh, so it, yeah. It's interesting because there were things that I really get, we'll never get back to that because I just, We've allowed everybody, regardless of credentials and experience, to comment on things. Like, well, we also made them, like, we made them take away the YouTube dislike button count, man. I oh, mean, that's like a, a win, right? Like, and like, is it a win? I uh, miss that God, button. I mean, I miss being able to s look at a video and see if it's pointless. But you know what I mean? Like, I miss the being able to down down vote Amy Schumer. Don't, I mean, well, yeah, that's how dangerous no, it, Amy Schumer was. was. A, it was a win for us because they had to get rid of it because we were fucking down voting their shit so overwhelmingly that they didn't want it publicly displayed anymore. But you can still see it on Twitter and uh, yes. Facebook and these other platforms. As soon as you see like some Justin Trudeau or yeah. oh, the candle yeah. in the blank make a post that used to be years ago that. You know, my opinion was the rare one. And if I made a post anti, I used to, it'd be like, I'd have to shut off, mute the, before I got mad by Elon, by the way, I'd have to mute the replies because so many of these, I don't know if they were bots or just Trudeau lovers or what, like there'd be a lot of vitriol to me for going against the narrative. But now those posts just get hundreds and hundreds of likes from people who don't even know me. I mean, they just see the comment under Trudeau and they're like, yeah, fuck this guy. So, I mean, and Graham spends more time on X than I do, so he can probably comment to it more than me. But it seems to me like, I mean, if you go by that, it's, and I, dude, I'll scroll down too and try and find the positives. But there, it's like, I think they're hiding them from us. I, I think they're hiding, it, uh, Elon hiding some of the comments. That. Elon could be doing that. He's pretty, it's crazy. But, because there was a brief second where Elon and account. Twitter was like, well, this might be interesting. So what I've discovered is once they realize they can't control it, they flood it. They flood it with low vibrational stuff. They label anything they don't like, hate speech, and then they get the bots going. And because, you know, 
whatever Elon is, uh, you know, I don't necessarily have any faith in a LARP who's playing a role of like a maverick when he's a son of emerald dealers out of South Africa, you know, like him, Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos. None of these people are mavericks. All of them are selected as probably for having the traits they think that that's necessary to move this project that their uh that their 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 family wants them to do whether it's you know Jeff Bezos dad is creating DARPA and don't tell me Dar- Amazon isn't a DARPA project like it's probably one of the more easier ones they're like okay we can put this out to the masses this isn't like us fucking around with the and old it's so ones so convenient and they, they, you could study. You go, oh, how do we, how do we put something out from the government that nobody will pay attention to until it's too late? Oh, let's sell books because nobody <laughs> well, gives not, a fuck like them, about books. It was probably even oh, what was the one before that? But Amazon's definitely the next one in the line where they sort of take over. That's like the military industrial yep. complex taking over shipping via the private sector, which they've now. You know, I, the book thing, I think it was probably, it, I mean, Bezos started it, but at that time, I'm not sure it was as, it wasn't as bad as, or might not have been on the same trajectory it is now. I mean, maybe Bezos wasn't on it the whole time, or he's the guy who gets to get it to the point. But I think the initial thing at Amazon was to sort of take over shipping via the private sector somehow. And then they've got, they've got all these other sectors captured as well i i I I agree i I do find it hard to believe though that he wasn't part of it when his dad his grandpa literally created darpa and the same thing with like mark zuckerberg who everybody's like oh dude he loves jujitsu he's like one of us like johnny i think you brought it up the other day (laughs) we're like oh somebody told him do jujitsu and love grilling and like clearly workshopped yeah they workshopped him oh he's just like us he loves the grill you know, and it's just like, no, dude, the guy is uh, uh, the spawn of Rothschilds or Rockefellers. He was positioned there. They probably like, I wouldn't doubt if Tom from MySpace figured out a way of doing it on his own, right? And then they're like, oh, hey, this guy's doing it too. Hey, let's just buy him. Nope. Well, we're just going to create, we're going to give this fucking nerd dork lizard person at Harvard a fucking this whole thing that he's going to run as a cool thing for fucking nerd dorks at Ivy League schools, which are all okay started by opium families. Each one of them is started by an opium family to give their children a one up. So when they walk into a high end job, they say, oh, I went to this school. That's a green check to go. Oh, he's one of us. So I don't believe any of these billionaires. I mean, Bill Gates is the most obvious of it all. Well, yeah, they sit there and then like they use like the co- the most common car, yeah, just so they can be like, oh, look, I'm I'm like yeah. you. No, you're not. Look at me, I'm bald. And then Jeff Bezos just HGHs <laughs> and bangs fucking Latina strippers. I can't it's, wait till you get. I'm on that. I'm just like you. I can't yeah. wait till you get on that. No, I'm never. Dude. Yeah, you, we talked about it, dude. You I might thought about. 60. No, dude. Oh, I was thinking about doing it. Doing HH. You're not on the Elon dick, though. Lots of people are on the Elon dick. It's kind of hard to stomach, don't you think? I mean, I I did a. Uh, I mean, I've had a couple tweets go into the millions, which is unheard for me. They never let daddy dance, ever, dude. They so he can be better than the alternative and still yeah, be bad. I, you know what I mean? I think I think that's really where. Well, we're I mean, he he. The death blow was his inability to allow criticism of Israel. And you don't need to censor if you're if you're in the right. That's my humble opinion. Like if you have the if you have the proper you have the, the right cause, you should be open to discussing all criticism. You should be able to do it. And if you're censoring it, it means you're you're losing the battle. Real quick, guys, uh go to samtriple.com, check out events. Uh, I have some great shows coming up. This weekend is Morris Plains, and I got a killer lineup Friday. And then Saturday, I'm doing Hotep Jesus' gr- Grifties. So I'm uh, giving away a Grifty. I, hopefully, it's not to myself, but I'll also <laughs> take it. I don't care, Tom. Did you get nominated for any? No, uh, we'll see. I don't okay. think so, so far. I know our boy Alex, uh, Alex, um, Alex Stein. Alex Stein got one. Prime time. Prime Woo. time. Do it, doing so heavy. He did, did you, the funniest thing. Do you see him against the Dallas mayor? Yes, bro. It was so funny, dude. <laughs> 
That is Savage. dangerous. Bringing up bro. his affair and stuff oh, yeah. in front of him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh man, let the players play, dude. And then the Flagstaff. I'm in Flagstaff on the 21st. Uh, Tucson on the uh, 22nd of March, obviously, and then El Paso. And then I believe on the tw- on the 30th, I am going to be at the uh, Joke Joint in Florida. I'll have that up on the website. So grab that. I'm doing the Chaos Twins signing of these uh, the uh, comic book, and then doing a show after that. So yeah. Um, I what are you doing for the eclipse? I'm, dude, I got you know what's so funny? I was I was walking my daughters the other day, and like I live in a weird neighborhood where there's like really nice, and then there's just ghetto shit. And I don't mind it. I like a little bit of both, right? Um, across the street, it looks like someone's throwing out a giant fucking telescope. Whoa! I'm thinking about going. Can I have that? Grab it. Yeah. I mean, dude, I'm it's not LA. Grab. I mean, it's, I've, it's I've LA. been thinking about for a long time. It's easy grabs. It's you LA. Just you I don't. Grab I, it. I would feel really bad if I did steal it, but somebody threw. No, it. I don't mean steal it. I mean, if it's out on the curb, they're getting rid of it. They're, it's on their lawn. It's not necessarily oh, oh, okay. a curb. So I'm gonna <laughs> knock on the door, going, "Are you throwing the telescope out?" Daddy would yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, do that. Yeah, for sure, dude. I, I really, I've wanted one for a while. That where I just. Uh, one time I went with a friend who had a killer telescope, and to see the rings of Saturn with your bare eyes is is. That's something, dude. That I mean, it's special, and I I want my. Is own it now. not liquidy? Is it clear? It looked it looked like Saturn in the pictures I grew up with. Honestly, what if he was just taking a picture and putting it on top of it while you looked? It was like, oh, no, I mean, it was like an, he's Saturn, got it, he's not got one of these modern like no, computer no, 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 computerized I, telescopes either. It's like a real. So April eighth, it's happening. What? The, the eclipse, right? Okay, dude. Well, what are you guys doing? A big event? We are. Tell us. Tell us about it. Darren, you want to go? Well, it's four minutes of totality, and it's the last one for like a century. What? So if you miss the if you miss the last one, you're gonna to want to catch this one. A cloud got happened. me on the last one. By the way, can I say I was in the perfect place <laughs> to see it? I was down in South Carolina, Where and a you? cloud. Co- I was in South Carolina. Well, and perfect place. Cloud cover. You got to get some. You got to do the research and find like the the place where it's most likely has the least amount of cloud cover. It so we do a stargazing nice. event. So it helps us do. These places. So the high desert is always a good place. But this time, when we looked at it, you know, speaking of last time, I heard a bunch of people went to Seaside, Oregon, because they told them it was going to be totality and then it never got there. So there's like people just stacked up and then nothing. And the thing about the eclipse is you could be like 99% totality. But if it's not 100%, you're not getting. The darkness. You're not oh, it was so darkness. creepy, man! It was so creepy when it fire. So we're doing it in Texas because this year it looks like it's the it's supposed to be right. The, th- yeah, like right there. There's a lot of videos where it's like supposed to, Texas, to pass guys. right Let's through. It, right? Yeah, we're, it? Doing, we're doing it in Utopia, Texas. Let's if go, you guys. go to contact at the cabin dot com, uh, there's a button on the top of that, and we're doing a music festival. So we got dude, we got comedians coming. You could show up and do a set. We got some com- com- comedians coming. We got a bunch of bands coming. We got some speakers coming, and we're doing. Uh, I'm not against it. It is nice, a Wednesday. Right? Is it a Wednesday? It's, it's Monday. A we- it's a Monday, I think. Oh, that's April? yeah, yeah. You're right. It is a. Mo- I'm not against it. Let's do it. I will go, man. I, I'll go in a heartbeat. So cool. Ben from Uncharted X will be speaking there too, oh, and I love uh, him. brothers, the brothers of the serpent, and uh, David Matheson about the stars. Luke Caverns. He's gonna talk. He's gonna do a presentation on human sacrifices. Like what? it's it's gonna oh, be. Oh, dude, we gotta, get, we gotta do this, man. Let's yeah, go. we'll go. We'll go. We'll set it up. We'll set it up. Try putting a, Eclipse the Canyon into Google, and it might pop up. So it's two day. It's two nights. So the one thing I noticed when I went to the Eclipse in Oregon is the traffic was crazy. Um, we got stuck actually leaving it and got stuck in traffic for several hours, and. Uh, I had to camp out on the side of the road because there's like, you know, just so many cars ever. So we're going to get around that at our event by letting you come in a couple days early and nestle in at the campsite on the 6th. You can come and camp and then we'll get up because it's in the morning. I think it's around 9 or 10 a.m. It's rent an RV and head down there. Yeah. I'm and then if you have down, VIPs, I think, bro. can stay the last night too, right? So they can beat the traffic on the way out. Is that right, Crab? You know, uh, the VIP is at night. the beginning, I think, at the beginning. So, All right. so there's yeah. a VIP ticket you can come around. It's not a lot of money. It's like 500 bucks. Uh, get you a camp spot. We'll have toilets and entertainment. Oh, and dude. I'll pay 500 for a cool toilet. People. For sure, bro. 
I'm like, dude, daddy's got shit. Where am I going? VIP. I'm just running to the bathroom showing my fucking wristband, dude. I'm in. I'm in. I'll, I'll, let's set up. Maybe I'll do stand up there and I'll just. Yes, hear I know some you guys that. want some spiritual shit, yeah. but here's some multi layered dick jokes. Yeah, you guys can hear that uh, on the latest Broken Sim, actually. Well, okay, okay. <laughs> you guys love talking about that, huh? <laughs> that wasn't me this time. Okay? I love it. It's just like unbelievable. A guy takes live streams one shit. You do shit. talk about it a Suddenly lot. He's a, an asshole. Um, the other cool thing is it's in Utopia, Texas, which I think is the same police department that fucked up that uh, school shooting. Uh, oh, 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 really? Oh yeah. shit! Cool. No way, really? Yeah, yeah. It's oh. a little. So it's like a little, like uh, what would you call it? Like a little, uh, little it's meta uh, conspiracy folklore there as well. You know, for us. Uh, well, I, that, like we got a lot of uh, of fans, or a lot of people. By the way, I drove through Waco. It's not that bad. I mean, it's crazy because ah. it's it's known as like crazy town. Right now, it's fine. how many times do you, uh, how many times do they go strange well, they things happening in things. Waco and yeah. you're like it's Waco. It sounds good though. It looks great. I mean, I could live in Waco. I know, dude. I'm so ready to retreat to do nothing. Just you know, just walk the earth, dude. But are you still in California? It's a long story. <laughs> I guess, <laughs> so, dude. If I, I I am not a man, I I cannot just do whatever I want. I have children, so I have to play a game. And uh, I'm blessed to have those kids, uh, but Daddy's working on it. Daddy's working. <laughs> He's trying to figure out ways to make things happen. He's just slowly running psyops. You can do <laughs> hey, it. Hey, let's get out of here. I'm like, I'm like something happening over there, you know. Um, but, 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 um, I, I'm into it because we've had a lot of guys on the show who uh, we've been blessed to have them on the show that are talking about like parallel cultures and, and systems and i know it's something you guys want to talk about and i think about it all the time you're like i am can can we fully get out of the system is it possible and what are your guys thoughts on what are you guys doing well i mean I, up in canada like i've been saying a lot of people i love your view on everything sam like you've got a positive view on people waking up and things getting better and i, I mean I flip flop back and forth all the time, but in Canada, people are waking up. I mean, there's a small cult that won't wake up, but a lot of people are waking up. But, but I mean, we've been doing these events like with Randall Carlson and, and this Eclipse event and our contact at the cabin and we meet people that sort of follow the show. Like you probably, when you go out to your comedy events, you probably meet all kinds of cool fans and stuff. And uh, to us, that's, that's something that we do that um, brings people together kind of ignores sort of what's happening, you know, in the world in a negative way. And we, and we do sort of like learning events uh, on these trips and, you know, we'll go through the, through Washington with Randall Carlson and you meet and just, you know, they don't even necessarily know about our show, these guys, but you meet like people that follow Randall, for example, you just meet amazing people, you know, all these people that are open-minded and with all these different sort of topics. So that's something we do physically. Five, what's your tribe? That's what I think yeah. you got to do. I think you got to, I, I am, again, we talked about this on the last episode, but I'm really just over trying to convince anybody of anything. Yep. I just can't do it anymore. It's just like, if all this crazy stuff's happening and you don't understand that, I don't know what else it's going to take. And, you know, the truth is, is that most likely your algorithm is lying to you and not letting you see all the stuff going on with this vaccine and you're not you're not getting the information you know when i look at somebody who walks around with a mask on right now i go your algorithm is lying to you right now it is giving you comforting comforting lies over unsettling truths and i can't save you it sucks when it's a hot chick too you're like oh you're so hot and you're so dumb. And, you know, you go from like a nine to a four or a three real quick. And it sucks because you're wasting, you know, your, 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 your possibilities here. And so I just want to, you know, and I, I look at Canada. I just, I, I just don't understand how people can be okay with what is happening there. And, like, this demoralization campaign that's going on. I mean, dude. To call truckers, freedom truckers, Nazis, and then to salute a Nazi. If you think that was done on accident and it just didn't work out and they bumblefucked that, 
Like, you don't understand how these people operate. That was done on purpose to demoralize you. They want you to not know if you're coming or going. They want you not to trust your eyes, your ears, or the wisdom of your experiences. And that's my humble opinion. I think they're all fucking idiots. I really think they're... I think that... uh I'm firmly of the opinion that it's in free fall, man. It's all coming down. That's why they're like printing all this money and stuff right now because they, they, people smarter than me have figured it out too. It's like, okay, we got all this shit's going to be useless right away. The money ain't going to mean anything. The, you know, it's all, I don't see how the system stays on, man. If there's one thing I've picked up in the last year talking to people across like every sector. It's like, everyone's like, I don't know what's happening, man, but everyone's retarded. You know, there's like the, the ability. <laughs> That's to, my closer, by the way. The the ability for people to pull off professionalism at a high level in my industry, which is, which is pretty high level commercial construction, building airports and hospitals and high rises and things like that, at least portions of them. You know, that that is in fucking free fall, dude, to the point where... It's like it, I, I honestly think we're like a decade away from not being able to build some of the things we were, we were building a few years ago, or maybe we're even still attempting to build now. You know, I don't I don't see how we can keep doing it. And I, I talked to people in the electrical field and I talked to people and I was just talking to someone in another industry the other day and they're like, oh, yeah, it's a, I'm noticing the exact same thing. And it seems to be across the board that there's there's this giant expertise gap that was there's always been this demographic collapse that's been coming to the West because we've never been having enough kids since the baby boom to really keep replacing ourselves. You need to have, I think, 2.7 or 2.3 kids per, per person or per family to keep everything going. And that was falling apart and they were trying to fix it with immigration. And that doesn't seem to be working. It's, I mean, at least up here in our industries, it's gone from like... You guys don't have Mexicans. Well, we do. We have too far. We have, we have all, but cold. that's the things. So your your demographic thing is now turned into a competency crisis because you can't just cram people from other cultures and other things into these into roles. It might work for like certain things, you know, restaurants and different things like that. But once you get into the higher level things that that take years and years, and they're sort of you know you, you're not going to get someone from the Middle East to come here in a lot of ways and, and in a lot of cases. And, you know, we've got some, we've got a lot of doctors in Canada that are from other countries and, you know, some of them are okay, but most of them, it's like, how the fuck did you become a doctor, man? Yeah. I feel like you wouldn't have passed the test here. Hey guys, I want to tell you about our friends at Mando. That's right. Listen, do you want to smell like a zero? In a clinical study, men who shower with soap and use Mando whole body deodorant in their pits had odor score of zero out of 10. Woo. And after 12 hours, zero out of 10. Wow. No odor. Okay. No odor. No odor. Okay. Men who shower with soap alone had an armpit odor score of eight out of 10 after 12 hours. Big odor. Okay. So here, I want to introduce you to Mando from the makers of Lumi Deodorant. Mando is a clinically proven to control odor for 72 hours. Wherever you think it's pits, package, feet, beyond. Dog, just rub this on your feet, dog. Let's do it. I'm all into that. I hate having smelly feet, dude. I do jujitsu. Mando! Mando! Mando is clinically proven to control it for 72 hours. It doesn't matter, okay? Make the switch to Mando whole body deodorant and smell like a zero every day. Zero to hero, okay? Yep. So we got a special offer for you right now. New customers get $5 off a starter pack with exclusive with our exclusive code and link. Use tin foil, okay, at shopmando.com. That's S H O P M A N D O.com. You love it, you love it? I love it. We I can't, love dude, I, can, I will not cross the border without Mando. I need to smell good when I get when yeah, I when I get over. This guy goes to raves and my, with yeah. with people partying and he's going seven two two days straight. He puts it on, still smells like a Ooh. champion. S smells like the king of zeros, okay? That's what we're talking about. No smell, doesn't matter where you are. They're going to take care of you, okay? 
Thank you, Mando. Whole body deodorant. Mando is seriously safe to use anywhere on your body. Created by a doctor who saw, who firsthand saw how normal BO was being misdiagnosed and treated. Okay. Clinically proven to block odor all day and control odor for 72 hours. That's what we're talking about, dude. I'm so excited. So one more time, uh, for new customers, get $5 off a starter pack with our exclusive code at this link. Go to shopmando.com. That's shopmando.com and use the promo code TINFOIL. That is S-H-O-P-M-A-N-D-O.com with the promo code TINFOIL. Smell nice, guys. Yeah, you know, it's just like, I love humanity. I love human beings. But, you know, when you see, like, Ice Spice is a cultural yeah. icon, you're like, maybe Bill uh, Gates is right and a bunch of you got to go. A bunch of you guys go. <laughs> yeah. You know, It's hard not to see the useless channel, right? And here's the thing. Up until a few years ago, I would have been live and let live, man. Who cares? It's like, let the, if I, even if I think you're a sheep, who cares? But then this weird thing happened during COVID where, you know, maybe I got to feel how some of the elites feel once in a while about the herd because the herd was like ready to put me in a fucking camp. Yeah. Yeah. Not get vaccinated. The herd was ready to never allow me into restaurants and, you know, not the whole herd, but enough of the herd. And the rest of the herd was just fine with going along with it and looking the other way. You know, well, yeah, I don't really agree with it, but what are you going to do? That's the rule. They, they were just fine. With Graham and me and probably you guys, I'm assuming, just not being allowed in fucking society. I mean, they weren't ready to put us on a train and put us in a camp yet, but the indoctrination wasn't really that fucking hard yet. I mean, people weren't even really dying or no one really knew anyone who was dying. So, you know, if they would have doubled that down for another year and a half, they would have probably had the public ready to do things that most of us would consider unfathomable in a western society to people who do not get vaccinated so yeah. what, do you, what do you do with a herd that now becomes actually a danger to your existence or the way you want to exist i mean that's a big thing for for you in california where it's if your kids ain't vaccinated they ain't coming to school you know if they want to get transgendered and you're not around it we'll just fucking take them away and transgender them and throw them in a house with a couple other transgender parents and you ain't gonna say shit about it I mean, what do you do when the herd gets to that point? How do you not say, I can't vote my way out of this because there's more of them than there is of me? What do I do? What are my solution options? I mean, I don't know. I don't I don't have them. I don't have a solution option, but it's just a I can start to see where, you know, people could think that the chattel could be a major problem. The useless eaters. I mean, I've even got got myself calling them useless eaters from time to time because now I can't help but have levels of contempt for the people that were willing to outcast me and mine over fucking what the TV told them. I, how do you reconcile that? I'm with you, dude. I am with you, dude. I agree to, with all that. It is a hard, because hard here's the thing. They'll do it again. All those people, I would say for every 10 people, that were ready to fucking cast you out. And, you know, they're all over. Oh, jeez, that was crazy. Was, you, know, <laughs> you know, I can't believe they did that. You know, not I did that. One out of 10 will say, I can't believe I did that. Maybe one out of 100. But ah, yeah, that was crazy when they did that. But I'll tell you right now, nine out of 10, or at least four out of five of those motherfuckers will do the exact same playbook when it comes around again. They'll just look. Oh, look I don't know. Uh, a lot of people have woken up the other way. There's well, not that many people left. And most, most people have woken up in Canada. I mean, even though they are still, they're still talking about excess deaths officially on the mainstream news and they're just saying, one, oh, it's yeah, uh, but the Israel op was just the fucking thing. You know, all the people that I was looking at as being heroes because of COVID just fucking fell right into the Israel bullshit fucking hook line and sinker. It's the perfect issue for dividing people. The Israel thing. It's it really is. Well, I mean, it, there's a lot going on, and I, I would agree. The question is, how long do we remember, okay? Because if you study 9-11 and weapons of mass destruction, that has really hurt them in their attempt to get us into war with Iran, Russia, and China. 
And we're starting to realize that they'll lie through their teeth and they don't give a fuck. There's no honesty. Everything is a manifestation event. That's what, and they can't manifest. They you the weapons of mass destruction took away a giant opportunity for now. That it's like it's like we don't believe anything, and they're always like, "Oh my god, they've destroyed." You know when when they said like uh, Iran killed these the servicemen, and it, you know if that's a true story, then heart my 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 thoughts and prayers go out to their family, and that I do I do give prayers to people. So anyone thinks that's some phony ass shit. I do, I do put out prayers, and I know people who have said that their family members are on the verge of death, and they put out prayers. So I believe in positive thinking and manifestation. That's what I believe in. And but they, they, they they've used so many of their playbook, and now there's a permanent record for the most part. Even though it's not what it used to be, which is the internet, it's hard for them to pull this stuff. So when I saw the swine flu thing, I go, that was the playbook that they used again on us. For COVID, but the question is, can they use it again? Because well, you they'll, know, just, they'll just do a new playbook. It'll be different. But I everything's a, everything. I, I just don't think. I understand what you're saying, and I I don't think that's without outside the realm of possibility. The weird thing, Sam. They they just keep marching forward with it. It doesn't matter that more people are waking up. It doesn't matter that uh, you're muted, Graham. I can't hear you. But it doesn't matter. More people are awake than ever. Everyone's freaking out. Nobody's taking their shots anymore by their own admission. But it doesn't matter. The public playbook, the public perception, or if, sorry, take the public perception out of it. Just think the way you got to think about it is what's going to happen in 40 years when kids are reading the, because there's, these podcasts are going to be gone or hard to find. And it's going to be, well, the New York Times said that, you know, unvaccinated people were still killing people in 2024. And we can go, oh, let's go to the Washington Post. Oh, because, you know, maybe the internet won't head in that direction, but it sure seems to be heading in this direction where they can just assume, and for the record, I think everything will fall apart before they ever get to this point. But that we they can assume that all they have to count on is the certain historical markers that the next generation or at best two generations will be able to look at as their is the truth. I mean, World War II is the big one right now where I can't even really speak my full opinion. I mean, by law in Canada, the new thing. That's is so up. crazy, bro. But World War II is a big one, right? Because I can tell you right now that the World War II narrative is nothing like you fucking hurt. I mean, I can't tell you exactly what happened, but, you know, we're not the good guys that we think we were at the very least. And where 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 can't you probably, say oh uh, for Canada? Well, you, you can't, can't deny the Holocaust, and you can't you can't deny that the Nazis did the Holocaust in Canada. They, and they're just updating that law again in their new thing, which we'll go over in our new roundup show later tonight. But it's against the law in Canada to question the Holocaust. Um, in Canada and Germany, I think are the two only countries that technically have that law. Even though I have freedom of speech and freedom under freedom of expression that doesn't fit into it but the world war ii narrative is not like they told you i mean i, I don't want to sidetrack this whole thing by getting into that right now but it's sort of this thing where it doesn't matter because everything you look at in google there was no sort of you know all the papers of well let me just say this what, dude let me just say this darren i i do really do believe that you will you will see a discussion of everything that you're saying right now I really do believe that that discussion is coming and it's a very important discussion. You know, obviously we don't want to get anybody in trouble or upset anybody who, you know, I mean, it, it just, it's going to happen whether we're the ones who are going to have that discussion or not, you know, people have that discussion. Um, and and I, I think people are waking up to it. I do. I really do believe man. And, and I, you know, they would want to have this war. I mean, people like, I hope Canada is waking up to the fact that who defines something as hate speech and is any hate speech worth life in prison? Like, If anything, the new legislation is more vague than the old stuff. That's on the table? I thought it was maybe a ticket. And like, what's uh, going like to happen? No, what's going to happen? $70,000 and... Life in prison. I could have swore which it was a is hilarious ticket. that you're like, oh, 70 grand and a th uh, life. It's like, dude, take it all. I mean, doing life right now. Like, what do I give a fuck? What are you talking about? It's so dumb. 
And the fact that, like, I don't, wow. like, it's it's crazy Well, life me. in Canada's max 25 years. That's a life sentence is 25. That's still a lot. So we're crazy. Yeah, that's a lot. I mean, I'm not that's saying. Not, it's like, dude, you gotta, go, you gotta go jump rope for 20 minutes. But it's like, it's like real shit, dude. That's crazy to me. And that's crazy that people are upset about, you know, that aren't upset about the January 6th guys. Well, and the crazy thing is, is that when the conservatives come back to power, they won't do a fucking thing about it. They and just, that's what we're learning here in this country doing everything right now. For a while, they won't do anything new to piss you off for a while, but they won't be like, hey, all that stuff we've been bitching about for the last fucking four years or eight years, they're not going to roll any of that stuff back. So is there an actual person who thinks that that, that that should be the punishment like do you guys know an actual person like we we talk about like these these trans they're everywhere they're not it's on it's on tiktok it's on instagram is there anybody that you know well, be like, no, yeah, it's, 20- that's not true i don't i don't agree with that that the trans are fucking everywhere now dude i mean my friends my kids each know multiple trans people and i have a stepdaughter that goes to a different school and she knows a couple of trans people so there's trans kids and seemingly Every fucking school in Canada right now. That's not, that never used to be the case. Well, and when I was a kid, it was. uh, That's causing it. But how many trans kids did you know growing up? That's true. I knew one gay guy. That's it. And yes, it's social contagion. It's social contagion. But you know what? There's always been a a tension horse. Then that's really what it is. And I'm not arguing with you on that. But when I was a kid, it was goth chicks who worship Satan. And they would they would show, and it was always the fat kid, chicks who wore black, and everyone thought they were going demons. And they came to our school one day, and everybody flipped out. Yeah. Different- <laughs> yeah so then sprinkle some autism on that. One hundred percent. You know, oh, fucking, you got a real problem on your hand. No, I think I I think you're right, and I think like you know, listen, every the, the there's the progressives are are chaotic right now. The progressives are chaotic and it's like you know we're talking about birth rates it's like you know johnny i forget where we were talking about this but it's like you know you want to talk about who's having birth rate problems educated women now that is not me saying a statement that we should not educate women because i think we should i find smart chicks hot yeah yes but the question is you should just not let them vote <laughs> that's an option but but the the truth is is that is like what are they being educated with that is making them not want to have children? And that's it. Why is Japan, why is China having plummeting birth rates? What is happening in education that is convincing them that having a child is a giant waste of time? You think that's education and not societal forces? You no, know, but and that's where priorities. feminism is in, inserted. That is that is another jab. That's feminism is a big part of it in the West for sure. Is for feminism. sure the culture that convinced them that kids were gonna hurt them more than harm them, which you know ultimately probably wasn't true. Mixed in with you know the educated ones tend to be the ones that also can have the foresight to see more of like the implications of their actions. So they're like, oh, you're always sort of thinking about yeah, okay, the money, the tax, the this, the that. And you're less likely to stumble into the kids, I think. That's the, I mean, dumb people are just fucking and reproducing all the time accidentally. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, I have family who are all not know the educated people like that. that are just having kids all the time. What? You know, Say accident. that again, Johnny? I mean, I have family who are not, they had a kid, they don't want to have another kid because they don't want to bring them into this shit show right yeah, now. Yeah, again. I mean, there's a lot yeah, of that. Going another one, it's the big one's money. They just can't afford it. We haven't yeah. provided any, like, tax incentives for people to have kids it's just a giant expense it's all of having kids in the west is a giant expense especially down there i mean my buddy had full the, good insurance he said but it still was like three grand he had to come up with when he had his kid i think he ended up he ended up getting some of it back or i don't know how it works but he was like dude i don't know a kid i gotta come up with this money and i'm like jesus but even in canada where the the birth might cost me money, but everything else, every step of the way costs a fucking fortune and you don't get like much of a tax break for it. Like some of these places like Hungary, they'll probably see a bunch more kids where there's like, I think their thing is 25% of a 
lifetime tax break per kid. So once you have four kids, you don't pay income tax anymore. Oh God, I'm moving there right now and never pulling out. Yeah, Mexicans, <laughs> I have Mexicans would ever. never pay I'm going to blast away, dude. I'm getting everybody pregnant. Can you, can you get other people's taxes if you have like 10 kids? Yeah, yeah. Like, hey. Can I start like grabbing people's money? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, yeah I mean, th there's something going on. It, 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 it's very interesting. Again, I don't necessarily, there's a lot of people like, oh, these Latins are coming up here. They don't bother me. Uh, it's, it's these military age men that are coming into the border who are going to get their fucking Chinese fucking teeth fucking kicked in if they think they're going to pop off on some shit in a fucking country that has 130 weapons for every 100 people. I mean, it's just like, I'm sorry. I mean, like, I love, I've been to China. They're the nicest people, but there's something going on, dude. And I don't think it's necessarily- well, you're in the belly of the beast. What's it like there? Because you, aren't you in, like, San Diego? Uh, ask, what is the belly of the beast like? It, can you tell there's, like, immigrants anywhere? Nope. Yeah, can you tell? No. Really. No. No, we're in L.A. We're because we're, yeah. listen, we're already Mexican. That's why. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so- so, like, my whole theory on, like, why is the WNBA being pushed over all these other female leagues? And the answer is because it's the most homosexual league in the world. It's, like, 90% gay. That's why they're pushing on everybody. Like, wait, wait. So, like, gays playing or gays watching? Gays playing. So those chicks are all dykes? They're 100%. all box eaters. Or wow. they have gotten their box eaten. Yeah. So it's kind of like anti women and anti trans because the trans is going to try and turn them chicks into dudes. Well, well, here's the whole thing about that. Why are we seeing trans in every sport, female sport, except for the WNBA? Because it's already gay. That's a good one. We don't have that problem in Alberta anymore because we just ban that shit. So. Well, we're trying, but the, you know, again, you get into Dude, white California women. California is not trying to do shit. No, no, I, okay, granted California, dude. I Believe me, dude, if we could move, we would move right now. Right now. I, right Where now. would you go? Where would you go? Um, There's some places in Texas, Florida. Those are some interesting. Those are the big two, Texas and Florida, sort of. I mean, uh, also Tennessee, but everyone I know except for one guy moved from Tennessee. The mountains of North Carolina. That's what and North Carolina is on it because we have some uh, family there. So uh, we'd all move we got, there. We got Animals. We if it, if it went down, we, if it went down, we would wish we. By would the have way, listened to John you would become the Mexican community of wherever oh, John. There's was. a lot of Mexicans. Are you, guys, so are you guys actively like thinking about as a group thinking about moving? We moving talk something? about it all the time. I mean, we'll see. Yeah. You know, I mean, That's could we move scum and kick it? <laughs> could we move that we show? Can move that it, we can move it, scum and kick it to like is another. It, is it locked in here? There's only fans in Florida and Texas. We you know what else happen. is good is Reno. California. You always talk about Reno. Reno, California. Uh, Reno, you Nevada. Out of California. Me. Reno, oh, Nevada. I, 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 yeah. Could, I don't oh, is, and it is that like half and half, so you could get the boast that you could sort of still go to California and just go home. It's, after. Like, it's like an hour flight from. Does it have a comedy scene? Because that's half your, like, that's a little bit of what you want. Well, I would dominate it. It'd just oh, it'd be, be me yours. and two other comedians. And I'd just be, do I'd be headlining every show. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, the whale. Don't they the have whale, kinda, Reno. They, No, they have a lot of comedy clubs. I mean, they're trying to flip it over. There's actually talk about how um, Reno wants to become the, um, what's the city where you can do all the drugs and bang all the hookers? Uh, Amsterdam. Uh, Amsterdam. Oh, really? They, they, they're they thinking about becoming full on Amsterdam. Is it is it full on blue, though? Is it purple? Uh, is I, it think, I think Nevada's purple. Okay. Because, I mean. Yeah, that was where the big, like fight was over the votes wasn't it yeah. or was that arizona? that's one of them yeah. Yeah, yeah arizona was the big one which is so crazy because you go to arizona and it's just you meet nothing but republicans but it's the youth there that are just like that is kind of the problem with success right you raise your children they have no need so they search out meaning in their life and they 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 find and they start battling windmills like trans children and 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 global warming like that's that's their thing they're like we gotta you know i had a joke about this but apparently in canada canada it won't work i go if bob's getting on a train that's traveling from la to new york it's going 60 miles an hour how many days till he sees a trans kid you know it's like that's the question and it's like apparently in canada 20 minutes but in America, you go in the middle, it will take forever to see a trans kid. Unless you go to these big cities like Portland where...
There's trans everywhere. I think that's just where it's going to get to, where it's almost like Brazil, where it's like there's chaos in the big cities, and then in the smaller cities, you just live a simple life. You also got to think about it. If you're trans, why would you live in the small cities? Right. You don't want to be taught. You, you, I'm out of here. Fuck it. They love me in California. I'm headed to California with me and my trans ideas. And it's so crazy because what happens is is you buy into this ideal I, ideology, and when uh, eventually you realize it's not real and it's not happening, it's not your belief system that's wrong. It's the system. And then you have to double down even harder to fight even harder because you believed in this idealism that was never going to happen. And it's not that you were wrong. It's, oh, you were actually way more right than you understood. And now you're going even harder. And now you can't have an orgasm. Yeah. <laughs> and now you can't get it up. And you got to wear diapers the rest of your life. You know? It's crazy, the dude. one has a 100% complication rate. 100%. I forget which one it is. I think it's the bottom surgery. 100%. Oh. Imagine. Who's yeah, of course. You I mean, they, you think they tell them that? They have to have no, a, a stent no in there for the rest of their life. The 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 male to female, they have to if it will heal. That's a hole that will heal oh. if they don't keep it stented. You have to dilate it every day, right? You got to yeah. you got to like a, you got a pussy plug. Yeah, it's I mean, yeah, it's it's, it's a dilator. Just one like second. Said, yeah. <laughs> think of that. I got to take out my fucking Stop. So every day, <laughs> so Johnny, stopper, yeah. every day they have to stick something in there to keep that wound kind of open. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, and it's not. You know, it's not like some... I don't think it's a bloody thing, but yeah, it will. It's like an earring. I it's think like a it is a bloody oh, like a plug, thing. I think like a it is plug. a bloody thing. I bet it is a bloody oh, thing. No. I don't even. I it's a it's bloody, unbelievable. Mess. Oh. But that, that, that I, I will say time. though, that is a testament to one of two things, maybe both how powerful that brainwashing is or how how bad miserable those people are yeah, yeah how, how bad they want it i think it's the brainwashing mixed with depression mixed with a whole bunch of autism yeah. and atrazine yeah yeah i'm not against that yeah. i'm not against I mean, that, that but in that context it, it i do i have you know quite a lot of sympathy for, i do is have a ton of sympathy that makes frogs gay that's the one right yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah it is yeah yeah, so basically the autistics are gay frogs. That's what you're saying? Well, it's not are just... The, are I all the just, gay frogs they're autistic? They're super impressionable, dude. We did a... We did a um, not a study, but we did a report on a study in our one of our outlawed roundup shows about like the crossover rate. And it's like over 50% of these are somewhere on the spectrum. Yep. So that's and that gets into... Role. Women, I, I love women, and there's a lot of great women. It's I, uh, both sides. I mean, Jim Jeffrey does a joke about lying to his his baby's mom on going and getting her vaccinated. So it's men too, but there are a lot, uh, you know, of mothers who, I mean, both sides do it that just still believe in vaccinations and buy in all the stories, no matter what they're told. And when you go to a medical expert to bring it up, they have all the bad information too. Ask your pediatrician, why do they give kids who are newly born hepatitis B shots a fucking party drug? Why? In case they have anal sex. In case, well, in the reality is, and this is from Rantcast, <laughs> he gets mad at me if I don't say it, um, that because they botch so many circumcisions and they have to cover it that way. And they can't tell you that's botched circumcisions, so they have to give the girls it too, even though there's zero chance they're going to get it. Wow. Is that because of the dick sucking circumcisions? Yeah, no, that, that's the juice. If they basically didn't give a circumcision, they wouldn't even need the shot. So yep. basically, stop the, stop the circumcision. Oh, this is coming no from shot. a guy with a snuff Yeah, I, do, over I, here. Uh, I can talk over here because I, I stand no, proud. No, 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 no. No, because when we were kids, there, there was tons of circumcision and no one was getting hepatitis. Uh, how do you know? What did you ask around? They could because you, of the, the the. Did you run the, a poll? I mean, like I didn't hepatitis. even know there was hepatitis B until <laughs> exactly. I got to LA, and everyone's exactly. like, "Watch out when you do coke with a fucking uh, uh, dollar bill, you could get Hep B." I'm like, "What is Hep B?" It's something even... we need to give you a shot for. Yeah, exactly. When you're a little baby. Um, what else is up, uh, guys? I wanted to talk to you about some of your books. Uh, one of your books, you sent us the PDF. It is the Code of the Illuminati. 
Uh, I want to get into this with you guys because you do stuff with Randall Carlson. We had a woman call in. We talked about this on the last episode, but we had a woman call in to the live uh, TFH, and they were basically like, what if the PSYOP is to make everybody hate the Freemasons? What are your guys' thoughts? Because I think, like, just like any organization, there's corruption at the top, right? Catholics, I think, are good people. The Vatican are scumbags, right? You got Jews are great people. The 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 Talmud Zionists are fucking shady fucks, right? And then you get into like Muslims at the highest end of these uh these uh, Sharia law fucking crazies, right? So, what are your guys' thoughts on the Freemasons? And everyone's like, oh, you keep talking about Freemasons. I was just, I'm just, because Randall Carlson was on and he defended the Freemasons as a wonderful organization. What are your thoughts? Uh, I don't know. They seem all right. They're kind of, I mean, I was joining them and they turned out to be fucking a bunch of pussies once the government mandates came in and they were just going to follow them. So I quit. I actually went through the whole process of actually remitting and leaving. So I think they're just a bunch of pussies at the best of times but i don't know I, i'm buddies with randall so it's hard not to come on his side when you get that earful of it all the time i, I think they're fine that, I mean, every mason i've ever met has been great yeah that's what i was gonna say we know a lot of masons and they all seem pretty cool to be honest i think it's the same thing you're talking about at the higher level i mean obviously their organization is going to be infiltrated by all kinds of other secret societies right the illuminati book the code of the Illuminati talks about that, where they go through the structure of the Illuminati, what they put people through to get up to their different levels and how they infiltrated the Freemason lodges as well. They wanted Freemasons to become part of their Illuminati because <clears throat> the infrastructure is already there. When you think back in France, like what, 25,000 lodges or something crazy, like crazy numbers back in the 1700s. Like people were, all kinds of people were in these societies. And I don't think there that was all bad. I mean, I think that when, you know, the people that are obviously running those societies have an opportunity to connect all over the globe and they can they can probably get a lot of nefarious things done through that infrastructure, but I don't think it's it's evil or anything like that, you know, from the bottom up. Yeah, I I I, I that to me is based on the data of my life is is it makes sense. Right, yeah. and the other all, all the Catholics aren't diddling kids. Right, I told, and but but then what you do is to get people to detach from these societies. You position or or these groups, excuse me, these these uh, you position corrupt people in power positions, and then eventually out them for being corrupt, which makes people not like these groups. But at the highest yeah. levels, it's it's all satanic to me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even, even some of the other ones, we talk about theosophy and this kind of stuff. I have a nuanced view about that too, because I've had, I've had to read all these books. Like I wanted to read them all, but it's not as, as simple. Like there's not a lot of evil intention in these books, right? People, all these secret societies, not all of them, sorry, some secret societies back from the 1700s, 1800s, like you, you had to go through a lot of work to get into one, a lot of work on yourself. Like you had to be very genuine, very honest. Like they talk about all the things that they wanted out of people to be in the society. Like whether you read uh, Manly P. Hall had some, some books on it. Um, Steiner, like the, the Blavatsky stuff. Like she warned people against doing all this new age stuff without going through some training. Like, I just don't think it's, it's as evil and it's a psyop like everybody thinks. I think there's a more nuanced thing there. And again, it, they, they probably get used for nefarious purposes, but everybody wants to just like throw the baby out with the bath, bath water and all this stuff. Yeah. And it's just another way to make everybody, you know, divide and conquer. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. It's like, it's like, we just know that everything is inverted. These guys are the good, you know, and, and you know, we take a look at it like, just you know the, the what's going on in Israel and how like just there's all these people that just are okay with the death and destruction based on propaganda and you know that these guys are the good guys and these guys are the bad guy and it's just like it's just all propaganda to get us to divide and conquer it's it's really crazy to me and it's really sad
and people can hate me, but like I love people. I'm a I've met people of all Jews, Muslims, everybody, wonderful people, you know. But when you start to get into this kind of like uh, defending some dogma, that's when you tend to meet the assholes. Yep. Another good example is George Bernard Shaw, right? We did a book on his called Everybody's Political What's What, and it's his only one of his only nonfiction books. And he was a known communist and socialist, and he was involved in all the social sort of elite type stuff, but he was anti-jab. Like when you read through his book, he was anti-vaccine back then. This is in the early 1900s. He was anti-scientism. He saw the problem with science. So here he is like a completely different political spectrum than all of us, which we would so, but we had all these other things we would agree on. Like we saw people getting sacrificed on the altar of science and he was against all that stuff. So again, it's just, it's all this, this nuance. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I, 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 I think, you know, I'm in recovery and when you, you, you enter the rooms of recovery, you'll hear someone say, look for the similarities, yeah, not exactly. the differences. And yeah. that's very profound. And I try my hardest, my hardest to, to carry that into everything that I do, you know? And it's hard because not everybody does that with me. And I can't tell you how many times I hear from people, Sam, you're a really nice guy. I go, okay, thank you. you yeah, everyone thinks you're crazy. <laughs> you're like batshit nuts. I go, I just have political views that make them think and they don't like it. You know? And they get angry with them. I, I, I force them to question the way they look at the world and they don't want that because they just want to continue cashing checks and, and going down that line. They don't want to think they, they want, they want to, uh, you know, uh, agree on everything. They want to do the agreeable, uh, they want to, they want to take the agreeable positions, you know, in some, I talk about danger, dangerous versus safe, dangerous, you know, a lot of my friends in comedy have very popular podcasts you know, they'll talk about the safe danger, right? Like now it's okay to talk about the, the vaccine and every, all the shutdowns. There wasn't a time and nobody wanted to talk about it. They just wanted to go along with it. You know, they'll talk about that now. or They'll talk about Jeffrey Epstein. They'll talk about all that stuff. And, you know, not like us that were in the midst of it and alienating people we loved because we were talking about the dangerous, dangerous. Yep. And what was going on with that? And yep. And and we still have Canada saying, admitting there's excess deaths, but they're saying it's from COVID. I mean, they're completely, it's the craziest thing. But I think this is what people are, people are waking up now. Cause like you said, now people can talk about this stuff. So it's bleeding from our little circles and our little uh, independent media platforms to the mainstream. And they're looking at the, the government of Canada saying, oh, well, we have 125,000 excess deaths in the last two and a half years. But it's uh, from COVID and cancer and people couldn't, and people just aren't going to buy it. People aren't buying it anymore. Uh, can I ask you guys specifically about the political system in Canada? We've watched some of the clips of, we love the way your government works. You know, it's a little your more. Your parliament is a little, more, it's a little oh. more confrontational than ours, I would it's say. Like it's like your it's mama's like English, contest. It's like English parliament a little. And I would, would a conservative government make a, a difference? Uh, how, how do you feel about the conservative leadership? It'll put everything on pause for a couple of years if we're lucky. I think the one thing he will do, he'll stick to, is he will ax the carbon tax because he's kind of running on that too hard not to. I mean, I keep my eye on the gun stuff, obviously, pretty closely. I'm a gun collector, um, and I can't collect any more handguns because there's a freeze on that for me. Right now, I would put that one at like a 20% chance that he'll change that Who's back. Who's the guy? But Is it that uh, Pierre? Pierre Polivier. Oh, 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 yeah. But if I was going to bet money on whether I'll get any of that stuff that the liberals took away back other outside of the carbon tax, uh, no, I don't think they'll reverse a single thing that they've been mentioning about the liberals doing for the last eight years. I think they'll sort of, you know, maybe make some fiscal changes to put some more money in my pocket and slow down inflation so that i stop complaining yeah. and they won't push yeah. they won't push a progressive agenda ahead any further so that i stop complaining for probably four years maybe they'll sort of take the temperature again then to see where the public's at if we need more time to calm down if they're ready to be advanced further and then 
the liberals will come back into power and they'll they'll take more of my freedoms away and uh i'll get up in arms about it eventually and they'll notice that i'm up in arms and they'll throw the conservatives back in power um for until i calm down and that they'll just keep doing that until they've got the guns because the uh, there's way less of me than there was in my people like me freedom people than there was in my grandfather's generation you know they wouldn't in my my grandfather's generation they wouldn't have got fucking one fucking step into those covid protocols protocols before they were like not a fucking chance and, and you know there wasn't enough of us to stop it and when they do it and because i don't think it's the one they're going to do in two years that you got to worry about it's the one they're going to do in 20 years yeah five yeah. Years. they, I, they showed their hand to give a fuck and and those kids will just be more more you know they'll be they'll care about their guns less they'll care about their freedoms less they'll trust the government more and they'll just fucking eventually roll over eventually they'll will roll over i mean i don't see i mean we can try we got the homeschooling trend in the u.s and canada is an exciting thing because that's the sort of stuff it's going to take to eventually win this thing long term in the school of ideas because every every fucking example we have to look at ends in crazy communist totalitarianism for a long time before it gets better and i don't and they, and they showed their hand during covid pretty good i mean it wouldn't have mattered who was in power during covid we had two big parties pretty much the conservatives with liberal liberals and nationally it wouldn't have mattered who was in power they, they were going to do it, all that shit to us it was cool to say it you know that's when his opinion changed is when he knew it was a smart political move during when they were locking us in our homes i was phoning my federal representative he had i called him and talked to him on the phone three times and all he had to say was well we got to get justin trudeau out of office nothing about you know he wasn't outraged about the playgrounds being danger tape or you know lockdowns plivier wasn't outraged not until after everything was said and done and the trucker convoy happened it was like oh this might be the way to go. The winds, the political winds seem to be going in the direction of freedom and I should jump on it. And he did the exact same fucking move when Danielle Smith jumped on the political grenade in Canada, who is my, I mean, a premier here, governor equivalent in the United States, uh, who was, you know, one of the first people in the Western world, at least the far Western world, I think Europe started to do it, to say, no, we're not doing fucking operations uh, transgender operations on anyone under 18 anymore it's not happening and we're not giving puberty blockers to anyone under 16 anymore we're not letting biological males play sports with um w women and we're uh was there was one more and we're not gonna let school teachers change let kids change their pronouns and everything at school without the parents being notified so some parental rights stuff and uh you know it wasn't until it was super apparent because they tried to demonize Danielle Smith for doing that. They tried to everyone, the media, Trudeau, wow, anti. But it's like, wow, turns out in a poll that 80% of Canadians agree with the legislation. Like from coast to coast, 80%, doesn't matter where you live, four to five Canadians agree that that's the direction we should be going. Now, Trudeau doesn't seem smart enough to take that message and down. He's just too far out there to turn back at this point it seems like because they he just, just own him stuff. dude he's but Polivia, it wasn't until after that was super apparent there's like oh wow everyone agrees with daniel smith then he finally finally after not commenting and avoiding the question for a year finally comes out and says yeah we're not i don't support that either so i mean no i don't think it matters who's running the fucking government i think that they're the all corrupted yeah, They're and it's not even the, it doesn't even matter that they're corrupt. I don't know that government exists for any, you know, I don't see any instance in history or in existence right now where it's not just a slow crawl to take away your freedoms and get bigger by its nature. It just gets bigger and gets more power. I agree, even, dude. Even if it's not maniacal, it's just like, well, I got this nice cushy job and then I would give my buddy this nice cushy job. So just, you know, it just... It grows without any, you know. It's well, they should. You should tell them the example. I don't need to be fucking governed. What example? You, you. Well, them. since 2015, the the government has has increased their employees by 100,000, which is like 35 percent. Yeah, I mean, 25 percent, 25 percent, or 30 percent. 
has increased since 2015. Homeland I mean, Security here has 250, I think, 250,000 employees. Homeland Security, 250,000 employees. What are we, what are you doing? And I like, exactly. I'm, I'm just listening to all these dumb fucks. You know, even the people who think they they get it, you know, and the, you hear them talk about, you know, like, I forget the, the Hill. They have the uh, blonde guy, which is super feminine, and the really smart black chick, and they go at it. And, you know, they'll have discussion. They'll have somebody on the breakdown how January 6th was complete bullshit. But neither of them are willing to say that. Yep. And they're like, you know, they violate the laws. It's like, no, dude. They complete. This is a, 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 and no one will come out and say, oh, they discovered that the bomb was a complete lie. It wasn't there. Nobody cared. They walked away quietly. They're just making shit up. The guy who ran that was running the, the governor of Michigan fake kidnapping thing because the whole thing was set up to create a, a, a national uh, uh, domestic terrorism division so that they could take away Americans' rights by labeling you as a terrorist. That's what and it's all about. And to stop the day from happening. I mean, don't forget when the window broke and they went order, order, order was right in the middle of the senator from Arizona talking about the 300,000 bogus votes and they that whole day went away. How can they just stop that day from happening and, and just pretend that it doesn't need to exist anymore? It's so hilarious. It's the worst insurrection in history, Graham. In the history, bro. In the history. And by the erection, way, sorry, there erection. are people in, in Biden's administration that were part of literal terrorist attacks on the government what was that what they, the liberation our, freedom our, my, our uh, ministry of environment is a convicted terrorist it's just like unbelievable to me it and, just, they, and they probably knew that they weren't going to get signed off on that right i mean that didn't that didn't that wasn't it the way that was it the senator senators or the congressmen had to like sign off on all that shit i don't need votes Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, if you go back to Al Gore, like, it was so obvious they stole the election from him, and he signed off on it. He was just like, yep, yep, I'm not going to I'm not gonna vote, vote for uh, to have a, uh, a, 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 an inquiry. We're gonna, just going to certify the election because he knew they needed, they needed uh, Dick Cheney in the White House. George yeah, Bush. And, he, and, and they gave him, and they gave him his job. Yep. Yep. There's yeah. no way corruption and complacency don't slip in. You know, the most benevolent government, you know, is just going to end up ruining your shit eventually by the best of intentions. It doesn't even need to be evil. The best of intentions and just not thinking out this decisions properly or not knowing what the fuck they're doing. I mean, after over a decade of doing this show, the one thing I can come around to is that, uh, there's definitely a higher power and there's no, the anarchists had it right all, all along. There's no solution that involves a state. If you want to be free and you want your kids and your grandkids to be free, the anarchy is the only solution. The libertarians are just going to hand the place <laughs> over to the corporations and you won't have the powers of the individual to fucking storm the castle. At least in anarchy, if some corporation starts fucking you over, the villagers will just go murder him. Here's the problem. How do we get to that? Because right now, you know, we've been talking well, there'll about There'll be a bunch a of options time. after they could come and collapse, man. It's all coming down. It's coming down. I, in, my, in my lifetime, I expect, like, the shit that happened in the 30s, but worse. Uh, because there's just way more people now. I mean, once this, once this, like, supply chain fully breaks down, which seems to be slowly happening, I mean... It was going to take a long time to break the some the supply chain. It was pretty complex, but you know we've already got now tankers being at our shipping ships can't go through certain places. It started the 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 end of globalism or at least global shipping, global consumerism is we're at that we're at that point. So it's just a slow crawl down from here where unfortunately probably a lot of people die because. I mean, we were just had in Alberta this year, this winter, where they barely kept the power on. They barely kept the power on. That's never happened, ever, ever. And supposedly, we should be at the like forefront of tech and all this stuff, but they barely kept the fucking power on. They want to blame 
new cars, charging, and phones, and all this stuff. Yeah, it's the, such the bullshit. The fact of the matter is, we're uh, 50 years further ahead in the cold. It wasn't even that hard of a winter. It was cold for like two weeks. But you couldn't barely keep the power on. So how does that, you know, I feel like that just gets worse. All the problems you're seeing in different institutions are just going to keep getting worse. And that, But I think that includes the ruling class it's like i think they're even more susceptible to it because they live in this weird nerf world with uh -huh. no real consequences and they're all a little bit inbred and i think that they're just the that part of the problem might be that you know the people that were maniacal and running the place handed it over to some people that were just not cut out to the task of running the fucking world anymore. Yeah, their kids are retards. Yeah. The, 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 yeah, the children it's not just their kids. of the it's elites not just their kids. are retards. Because they're rich, it's like, uh, it's more noticeable in that. But it's just, the children are retards. You know, there's just something happened somewhere where we raised a bunch of kids, gave them all fucking trophies for everything, told them they were a special little snowflake, and, and the world cared about their feelings. And none of that shit is true at the end of the day. And, you know, they don't know what to do about that. They don't know how to reconcile that. So I don't, I don't know. I think I, that's, I, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to piss everybody off, but <laughs> we've gone too female. We've done too feminine. We have to have a little bit of both. Oh yeah, it's, it's, that's it. There's no balls left either. I yeah. mean, the, the the end of the male is not helping it. I mean, whether that's by design or not, I mean, even if th there's pr there's definitely some sort of design, it seems like going on. But even at the best of times, if all you want to do is drink beer and eat potato trips and watch fucking football, you're not going to want to fuck and you're not going to have much testosterone <laughs> and you're going to be a shell of the fucking man you're supposed to be, you know? Yeah, I porn's ruin it, dude. Just yeah, that's a huge problem as well. Porn I would put right at the top of that it's fucking fucked me list. Up, dude. It, the real hell is going to be when you have to look back at the person you could have been on your deathbed and realize that you just wasted it watching fucking TV. And you you add that on to top of the fact that there's a fucking thousand different factions that are trying to get over on you. Well, you don't give a fuck about your life. You're just in cruise control. You're just drifting along with the nine to five. But then at least there's a big game tonight. So I don't, you know, no stress about actually live in my life tonight and then there's a new movie coming out friday and then that show i like is on wednesday so I'd, i don't really have to worry about living my life at all i can just hand it over to fucking people who don't have the best intentions for me and my kids and my grandkids and so on and so forth and you know we've got to take a giant part of responsibility for that too my grandma and i are just as guilty of not paying attention until it was fucking, you know, none of us have paid attention to politics for 25 or 30 or who knows how long. We just haven't given a fuck and we've handed the place over to crazy leftists. Yeah, I mean, dude, I'm with you. We, you know, the internet took us off from local and we all focus on like in America, on Washington, D.C. People stopped following the board, uh, the school boards, the city councils. I'm guilty of that as well. That's why I'm trying to, slim down my work schedule so I could focus on the kids, focus on, on my city. I don't know what kind of difference I'm going to make, but. You're talking but about PTA great. meetings? That's, yeah, that's a step in the right direction. Most people don't just want to blame their boss for their shitty life. It's like, well, go get a new job, man. It's not, it's nobody's fault that you don't like your job. Go, you know, figure something out, I guess. Maybe that sounds like a dick, but I'm like, I was like a single family fucking Indian in Canada and I managed to fucking find a way out that I didn't mind. Maybe I was lucky around the way, but I'm in that group that should have been the one whining and bitching and looking for a fucking check. So I would maintain that if I can find my way out of that hole, most people should be able to fucking find a life that they can not hate. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, like, listen, here's my whole thing. My life is wonderful. I mean, I get, the press company every here and there but i think that's a part of the journey to just be like oh man and then you gotta be like oh this too shall pass and you know i'm very happy where i am you know yeah would i i'm not an actor so i i learned very early in los angeles i don't want to be in movies 
I was in one movie. I was horrible. And I'm like, I can't. It's called uh, Live New Girls. And it's about this guy who takes over a strip bar. It's it's, it's a horrible movie, but it's hilarious. Yeah. And uh, I just realized I don't like coverage. I don't like any of it. And I don't want to uh, fucking do it. So now I, I do stand up and I do podcasting and I love podcasting, but I've realized that in Hollywood, what I'm good at is not seen as uh, important. You know, having a, a TV show on uh, television that nobody's watching is more important <laughs> than having a very successful uh, conspiracy show. But I'm okay with that. Like, I have freedom. I don't have a boss. I Well, some might say Dana, but, you know, at the end of the day, if daddy doesn't want to do something, daddy's not going to do something. So I, I that is that is to me happiness. That is to me happiness and finding happiness and feeling for other people that are kind of going through it. And don't, you know, all the money in the bank. I know some people have so much money in the bank and they're miserable fucks. They're miserable! Or they're frauds, and they know it. They know it. And time, what happens to frauds is time eventually comes and snatches what little little glory you had. This kind of achievement that you, you, you laid your hat on, that you slit throats and stab people in the back and put out a fake persona. Eventually that will go away and you'll be stuck with, did it, any of it matter? And the answer is no. None of it mattered. And that's why the connect, like life is about connection. And that's why I'm going to be honest with people. Like I realize I haven't been connecting with people around me outside of you guys and a couple other people. I, I sit at home all day. I just don't go. I don't, I don't connect anymore. Well, Most of I, my friends moved. You so got your I, kids though. That's another yeah. thing, because usually, uh, usually, not that it's an excuse, but every time we're like, oh, let's do this, you're like, oh, I'm going to hang out with my kids, which is great. Yeah. No, no one's hating on it, but yeah. it's a good excuse. Shut up, Johnny. No, I mean, that's the thing you always hear, right? Heated. Is that, oh, he's had kids. We're never going to see him again. You know what I mean? That's, yeah. that's the old thing. I know your world say. does get smaller, but I feel like I need to And you mentioned more. that you've kind of, mm, uh, what would you say, turned off some people. Well, I would think, though, think about it. Flip that and think about if you had somebody in your life who just won't stop talking about how great Hillary Clinton is. Yeah. You know what I mean? You would be like, do I really? I mean, no, I, I get it. Yeah. I totally get it. Um, to them, that's Hillary what you Clinton are. Hillary Clinton sucks. I get yeah, it. But that's what you are, though. You're that verse. You're the, the I know, inverse of that. I know. I know. They just want. If you watch Bobby Lee, who I love with all my heart, on Joe Rogan, and he's like over the COVID talk. Yeah. That's L.A. Yeah. hundred percent. That's L.A. Uh, okay. I get it. Let's talk about... I, yeah, I took the vaccine. Make, I get it. They don't even care. Japanese Care Bear sounds. You know, like, that's that's all he wants to do, which is great. <coughs> that, that's that's the power of Bobby Lee. That's why you go see Bobby Lee. Because he does let you not think about how crazy the world is right now. It's a different kind of... It's a different path, right? Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that path. It's just, like, for us, we try to help people. And I think people take it as... We're trying to <coughs> just, I don't know, fucking weird flex for attention. <laughs> You're right. like, you know, like any other any other generation, we would be revered. I mean, like everyone loves Bill Hicks and George Carlin. Good luck on that happening today. Good luck on that. It, you like would be with us on fucking bit shoot. Yeah. Getting yelled at about the Jews. That's what this. every comment. The fucking Jews. You're like Stan yeah. had to move to the desert. I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. That's what it do you think? Yeah. We, you, you think we might be like the like the like artist like Vincent Van Gogh, where like when we die, then we're like, did you guys hear about Tim Four Hat? I don't know, man. Here's what I, I don't. I here here's why I don't know because there's so much content being made yeah, yeah. that nobody really pays attention to the old shit because there's just so much new shit. Too much new shit. You're right. Like, dude, I mean, like, I, I can't believe how much my lo my kids love old Scooby-Doo cartoons. I'm so happy about that because we can ki we can bond on that. Like, I would love for them to watch I Love Lucy and The Three Stooges. I don't even know where you'd find those right now. You don't watch re you don't watch you don't re rewatch anything because there's always a new movie out. Yeah. The next day. Where do you even go for The Three Stooges, I Love Lucy, TV Land? But then you're back on their schedule of, oh, I got to connect. Yeah. So it's interesting, dude. I don't know. I, I would like to, I don't know, man. I'm trying my hardest. We're all doing the best we can, but I have a lot of peace and I'm just a happy guy. That's it. Anything about the Illuminati? Uh, 
pamphlet PDF that you guys have? What, what anything that you got out there that you found interesting that we could end on? No, I think I think we kind of hit on most of it. Just that uh, you know, I mean, her or his work is questioned as well. I mean, some people think they went a little hard on the Illuminati, but uh, you know, there's a whole controversy over what started the French Revolution, and I guess uh, you know the Illuminati is at the center of that. So, but they do have, I mean, they, it is written from the actual documents that were found. So it's, it is, you know, interesting, for people, dude. it is interesting. Yeah, for, How many real revolutions happen that don't have an invisible hand? No, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And it's scary, you know, cause they don't end up, they don't end up very good no matter who wins. It seems, you know? Yeah, well, the, the, the winners are the same winners as they always are, right? It's always the same winners. It's the banks that fund both sides, and then they pick who they want to win, i.e. World War II. You know, they, they get what they want, which is total destruction of an old empire and the raising of a new empire, and they're cashing checks the whole way. And it, I, I just really do sometimes believe that, you know, would there be war if there wasn't this fucking... This secret group of like people who make money off both sides. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think the French Revolution. We got to do a, d a deeper dive on that one. We got to have a show on it one day because I feel like that's a real that was a real turning point because that's when the, the the king got fucking hung. Right, like they they went after royalty and that whole culture of the rich. You know, they got everybody got so riled up they just basically took down the state and church. Like it was it was. Uh, and then people looked, people were fucking shitting after that happened, right? All over Europe. They're like, holy, look what happened in France. Like, we better look out. You know, I think that changed the trajectory of the whole political world from then on. That's also when um, the Rothschilds and that, that Paul Bunyan story were told about them about, oh, mayor is his name, mayor. Mayor Rothschild was like five years old running an investment firms and just like it's all Paul Bunyan bullshit. In reality, he was just positioned there and they did all the work and he gets all the credit. Yeah. It's just it's all it's all Paul Bunyan bullshit, you know? It's one of the two big revolutions in our lifetime that the people supposedly won, it just became apparent they didn't know what the fuck they were doing and starved a bunch of people to death. I mean the, I don't want a revolution that involves anyone else having power over me. If it's not to burn it down and leave it burned down, then fucking leave me alone. I love it, dude. I would like to burn everything down too. Uh, great show, guys. One more time. Tell them where they want where you want them to go. Grimerica.ca is where the OG podcast is. There's a 650 episodes there, all for free. Uh, no paywalls, no nothing. Great stuff. And uh, GrimericaOutlaw.ca is our controversial stuff. We do a bunch of news stuff there, Canadian news stuff, a lot of news we can't talk about um, anywhere else, like vaccine injuries and trannies and stuff like that. And then we got Adult Brain Audiobooks, which is sort of, now that we're not exclusive, this is you know sort of our, our big thing right now. It's new. There's a podcast. If you just go to AdultBrain.ca, it'll get you everywhere you can get to the youtube from there you can get the books on patreon like i say you can get them via podcast and everywhere else but they're free on on youtube and there's already more youtube audiobooks and more hours of audiobooks there than you will catch up on like there's probably 150 hours of, of free audiobooks available right now that you could just go listen to on youtube and by the time you're done those you know, we're, we're releasing on average about 25 hours of audiobook content a week right now. So, um, and that's for the next probably two years, I'd say, at least at a minimum, at least a year before we consider adjusting the schedule. I love it. I love and it. And then our events, our events are at contact uh, at the cabin.com. And there's the can, there's the eclipse at the canyon. We've got a Randall Scablands coming up in May and then down the Columbia, George with Randall in September. And I think there's one in the summer, right, Darren? Yeah, there's, that one's still on the fence, but uh, we're supposed to do one in the summer. If we go ahead with it, you can get tickets right now. That will kind of determine on what we decide to do there is if how many tickets start selling. Uh, but that one is in uh, Utah, Duck Creek, Utah, where we go to Zion Park and Bryce Canyon and check all that out at night and check out the stars. And then we got the big... 
And we got too deep. <laughs> right at the end. We, we got too deep. this far, at least. What? They let us get this far. At least. Thank you, Trudeau. Guys, you're frozen. Are you there? I guess not. All right, go check them out. Links below. Uh, check out samtriplee.com. Yeah, for, just shut down. For all of my uh, dates. Uh, yes. The, the Morris Plains, Flagstaff, Tucson, El Paso, Plano, Texas. Florida. Flor and possibly Florida. Uh, and they're back. Guys. Thank you so much. We're sorry we uh, that we lost That's you for a second. Any final no thoughts? That's about it. All Thanks, right. buddy. We love awesome. you guys. Let's let's not go this long again without doing a show. All right, guys. What'd you think of the episode? I love those guys. Crimerica is the shit. Yeah, I'm scared. I want to go to Texas with them. Another thing. On let's our, go on April eighth. Let's all show up. Let's go. Let's rent an RV down there, dude. We'll go to let's fly rent down an there. RV, rent an RV, dude. Go camp with them. Let's go do it. Let's go stare at uh, solar eclipse. Go glamping. Go glamping, yeah. whatever that is. That sounds gay. Well, it's, it's fancy camping is what yeah. it is, uh, Sam. It means, it means you don't have to shit in the woods. It's camping for fancy boys. Yeah. Ooh. So what, I shit in the woods? No, no it no just means taking an RV instead of laying on the dirt. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm not against it. I'm not against it. I want to take my, ki my kids camping. That'd be fun. Yes. Yeah, I used to go with my dad, but we a would cabin. usually get bored. You get a cabin. I mean, cabin's fun, too. Like a big bear. They'd love to just to see the little... I would love yeah, that. that's the move. Yeah. But I got to yeah. keep an eye on my one because she'll just run into a forest and I'll never see her again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's tough. Air tag it. Yeah, air tag. Air tag her. Yeah, just air tag Air tag her. my daughters. Yeah. What are we talking about? Hey, uh, uh, aren't you guys a little scared after this episode? Because don't uh, they say that Canada was like the test run of what will happen to America? And if that, and if that is any... Yeah. Anything real behind it? I'm that? a little scary. I don't know. I, I feel like there's so much that they do there that wouldn't work here. Not even eventually. Especially coming for the guns. Like, that is, good yeah. Luck. Good luck doing that in the south. We'll have a we'll have another civil war before we have the guns taken in the south. Yeah, I mean, like everyone's like, well, they did this, they did that. I'm like, if they take our guns, um, we're all fucked. I mean, like, can they take our guns? Can I, they? Are you aware of this movement? Speaking of taking guns, uh where people you know how they have these gun buybacks in cities where people just come and sell their guns there's this movement now of people who are into guns showing up and while the people are waiting in line being like what do you got there dude oh yeah i'll offer you like x for it more than the gun buyback and they're people are just adding to their collection of yeah guns i by do going. that it's really smart yeah that people happened to me good stuff that way that happened to me at gamestop i went into gamestop to church to sell a game and when I told the guy how much he gave me, another guy said, I'll give you more. And I was That's a kid funny. and I said, hell yeah. And the kid, it's the same thing. It was like, he was like, I can pay, I can pay more than the, than the store is paying you for That's it. That's funny. I was like, oh, well, you're doing it for guns. It's amazing. And the other thing you get is a lot of people who are, because it, the cut, it's pretty, it's pretty blanket. Like they're pretty blanket criteria for what qualifies as a gun. So you're getting people who have 3D printed material, like lowers and stuff for mm. rifles. And bringing those in and getting money for those, which is way w worth way more than what they actually are giving over. You know what I'm saying? So it's Johnny, anytime you government money's there. Yeah. I, how much is a printer where I can print? A 3D printer? You can get one for less than a thousand dollars. That sure. will like print a, a gun. Oh, oh. Uh, I don't. I don't. Know, I'm surprised actually. those are even I legal. I think you could. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, they no, can't make it illegal. They can't make that illegal. Oh, well, they can't make it illegal. It's just you, the. It depends on what you print, and you would still have to buy some metal pieces, though. Like some of the like the friction components would still have to be some kind of metal. Like you still have to, there are parts you still have to buy. You can't print a. I mean, I guess you could print a whole gun, but it wouldn't. It would blow your hand off. It, what guns well, are they doing work, that huh? with, though? That's the. What do you mean? Well, because they're all like, oh, dude. Um, so this is what happens. Johnny has a printer. Johnny buys the what the outliner. What is it, Johnny? Would you call it? What what now? If you want, can't you buy like on the dark web just like uh, well, the plans, outline? Yeah, just plans. Yeah, for... yeah, just plans. So all you need to do is really buy the printer, buy the plan on the dark web, or if you're smart enough, you create the plan. It prints it out for you, and like Johnny says, you still need metal components in it. Hmm. You can't just print it made out fully out of plastic, right, Johnny? Yeah, just because I mean there are components that rub against each other that there aren't. You know, I yeah. mean there are some things in 3D printing that, you know, some materials that are really rugged but not i don't think that i don't think they've gotten that far yet we're living in crazy times bro sam you know that theory where like all so. those all those immigrants that are coming are chinese and they're yeah. supposed to we don't know where they're going they could be yeah. teaming up and attacking yeah. uh 
yeah. power grid or yeah. the water system? You don't think that's doable? You don't think that could happen? What, that they could attack? Well, my, my whole thing is like, is, is the government letting it happen? So, yeah, it could happen because they're going to allow it to and happen. And do you think like after it happens, you don't think like um, – Americans would go out there with their guns and be like, oh, we need to take this shit back over. I, I just honestly, guys, I, you know, it has to get like um, uh, the in Kenosha bad. That's what it's got to get to for the people to come out. Once Kenosha was on fire, people grabbed their guns, walked downtown and said enough. That's how bad it's got to get for the adults to show up and I, be like, no fucking more. Because... What we're learning is that law enforcement isn't going to do it. That law enforcement is strictly there to protect the elites. And my cousin's a cop. I love cops. I, I'm not anti-cop in any way. But the truth of the matter is, it's like you've studied what they're doing. They're they're literally only protecting uh, the elites. I mean, outside of murder, let's say. And even that is now they're seeing people getting out on bond. That's done on purpose. It's a demoralization campaign. That's what they want. Chaos. That's what these Soros people are doing. Chaos. I don't think the people coming in are here for something as obvious as that either. I think it's more about the decay of society and no, but, the, and but what you're seeing in Europe. You know, the changing the composition and the culture. Yeah. I really think it's more to do with that. What, what they're going to do is this. It's a slow if you ask me, Sam, play this out. Here's how I think it plays out. They create so much tension that they end up having a giant war, and then one side... What war? What are you talking about? What kind of well, war? Well, I mean, talking? like, if you listen to El Dorado, he says there's a war between the pagans and the uh, lost tribes. No, but what kind of war would that look like for us? What would Civil we see? Civil war that? between, not, like, between, like, religions. Whites uh, versus Muslims. Europeans versus Muslims. A civil war in this country between whites and Muslims? No, I him? said Europe. Europe. Oh, oh no! But I'm talking, here, here. I'm talking about here. I'm talking about here. Here, it will be. It will start off citizens versus non-citizens, right? Oh, man. And then it will eventually move into did our government? People are waking up that the government is doing this. Yeah, you're seeing that in Texas. Yeah. I mean, People yeah. are waking up, and at some point they're gonna be like, "Go fuck yourself." I mean, you know, it's bad when Doctor Phil is talking about it. What yeah. do you think of Abbott in Texas? What do you think of him? I, 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 there's some people are asking, are they really doing any kind of defending? You know? So you think that's all just what uh, he's putting on? Yeah, putting show. on a show. Yeah. It's almost like with, with, hey, dude, don't worry. We're, do, we're doing something. You don't have to do it. But he's a, he won't condemn the WEF, the WIF, WEF. Some things you just can't say and keep your, keep your position, I guess. I think it's crazy. So I enjoyed the episode. You know, we've had a couple people on who have a darker version of the future. Yeah. I don't know, man. I always have hope. I just have, I, I think there's laws in the universe and the universe is love. That's my opinion. Now, I, I like that you say that because you've always said when I don't have hope, there will be no tinfoil hat. Yeah. You, no oh yeah, I like that he says that too, actually, yeah. because that we have jobs still. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> so that's about that. Guys, go to samtriplee.com. Please check it out. I mean, I have so many, so many dates coming up. Uh, Morris Plains, which is great. We already went through that, but all that. I want you guys to look at the website. Uh, we got some great stuff coming up here, guys. Keep going down. Keep, I need to take that off. Uh, Chaos Twins is fire. Uh, uh, in Florida, you're going to be signing. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to be doing the signing in Florida. So hopefully, we're setting it up for the 30th. So I'm going to be working on that. Uh, listen, uh, I am working my ass off on this premium content. I know, I think a big problem for me right now is I'm putting out so much free content. So people are like, why should I watch any pay for premium content? It's just a way to kind of help out. You got your rewinds. What are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, those are great. People are getting pissed at that is Hitler a Rothschild thing. You know, they're just getting pissed. Read some of the, I don't want to get into because some of my friends are commenting, but it's just like people just fall for it. So go back. Then uh, I got all that. If you For $15, you get all the content in Rockfin. It's great. If you're looking for premium content about investing, patreon.com slash cash daddies. That's there. T-shirts are fired. New T-shirts going up all the time. My late night king T-shirts, brand new. I'm going to put up the uh, 
the um I'm gonna put up the also the shirt with us running from Bigfoot. Me, okay, you, yeah, 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 I know. Which one me, you, you and uh, Eddie. I'm gonna put that out. So those things. Uh, golden, a uh, wise wolf, gold and silver is going to be doing a lot of work with us. Everybody, we're very excited about that. Uh, check them out. You're gonna, uh, dude. I'm part of their wolf pack. I join every time, and uh, I'm buying silver from them every every month. A little bit here, a little bit there. Buy it, stash it. Get ready for the collapse, okay? And you can uh, you can uh, just use the promo code that go to Samtribly dot gold and you'll get that Rife Technologies, bro. Get right, get right with Rife. His Rife machines, uh, check them out. People love them, and uh, yeah, he's gonna send us some. So we'll see how that goes. I'm very excited about that. Hydrogen brown gas is great. Uh, Harley Ray also our good friends at Harley Ray uh, use Swarm fifteen candles. Anything candles, anything crystals, anything like that you need, they they are the best. Check them out. We're very excited about that. And then product that I 100% use as well, uh, Tim James Chemical Free Body. I you, I take their supplements every day. I get I get it's a it's a burst of energy and it makes me feel great. And I do it every single day, every single day. And then again, my boy uh, at Joel Staley. Dude, he's great at giving you a workout. When you got time, he'll help you. And I saw results, and I'm getting back into it. I was sick for a couple days, but that's it, man. He, he'll he help you. What else? I got all my free audio there. All my videos are there on samtribly.com and uh, the telegrams. The, I'm going to be cranking it up on my own social media on, on samtribly.com. Uh, also going to be hopefully soon bringing new premium content to samtribly.com as well. Anything else, guys? Uh, I got these hats new brand new hats uh fully suede out at fully toxic.com go cop those over there at fully toxic.com subscribe to broken sim on audio podcast apps please yo oh yeah and check out my uh new show uh on rumble it's called doom scrolling and it's doing great so check that out all right guys enjoy the highlights here's a clip from the latest broken sim i'm not into <laughs> that that's not for me bless you Sam is battling a cold here. Just, it's like, showing it's up been for you two weeks. Sorry, two dude. weeks, bro. Your terrain is all jacked up. My terrain. Thank you, Johnny. I'm glad you finally gave in, you sucker MC. But your weak terrain is allowed for viruses your weak to terrain. get on you. Your weak terrain. Uh, so, Johnny, uh, real quick, since we're on comics, fat comics, let's talk <laughs> about David Lucas. Okay, yeah. Hold uh, on. Let me see if I have that up here. Oh, real quick before I get... Oh, yeah, we got a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, Johnny, like I said, a couple things I want to admit. I admit I read porn now, and uh, I just, I, I, as you know, I'm drinking herbal tea. Why, Johnny? Ask me why. Why are you drinking herbal tea, Sam? Because it gives me coke dick. That's why. Like, I get so jacked, I get baby dick. And I'm like, oh, yeah, this is what I miss. What kind of herbal tea is it? I don't know, bro. I'm Green just, tea? Yeah, I'm getting two bags, putting a lot of honey in there, and just getting jacked up. I'm tweaking, bro, and guess what? Daddy likes it, okay? Maybe that's why I'm sick all the time, because I'm redlining on herbal tea. No, that could be. That could be. Should I stop redlining on herbal tea? Well, I mean, it does have green. If it's green tea, it does have caffeine in it. If, that's, oh, if you're worried about your sleep. I just love the red line, bro. I feel like you, how the, many hours a night do you think you sleep? I try to sleep. I, I'll go to bed around midnight, 1230, get up around 930. Midnight, 12. Okay, so you get nine and a half hours? I'm trying. Wow. Nine no, hours. That's really good. That's plenty. Hold on, but it never happens. I end up getting up at 738, but I try to go to nine. Hold on one second. Dana, I'm podcasting. I'm at the studio doing Broken Sim. You're on the line. Oh, well, it'd be nice if you told me these things. I told you I was doing Broken Sim. Stop. Stop trying to cage this tiger. Sam's okay? Boss. Sam's boss is Stop on the phone. Try Stop trying to cage this tiger. You have a read tonight. Okay, bye. Okay, thanks for telling me you were going to Hollywood. Thank you. Bye. I just... I am a, I you, am a. You didn't check I, in with the warden. I'm a wild wolf, okay? You're AWOL. I don't worry about what the barking dogs do, the chain barking dogs. I'm a wild wolf, dog, Roman. You got to talk to the commanding officer before you leave the base. You know uh, hey, uh, can I go out? Can I leave? I'm, I've had a bit on good behavior. Hell no, Private Tripoli. Oh, come on, man. I cleaned the latrines. Let me go. Okay, what are we doing here? Uh, you wanted the David Lucas thing, is that right? Okay. 
So here's the David Lucas thing, and I'm going to tread very lightly because I know David Lucas, and I've known David Lucas for a very long time. Okay? He's an L.A. guy? He's an L.A. guy, started at the World Famous Comedy Store. Uh, here's the thing about David Lucas, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, he's a good dude. Okay. He's moved, probably, I would say this, moved way too fast. Okay? Just way too fast. And it threw a series of different things, shop, took him on the road, and... Um, and kill Tony. He became a kill Tony regular because he would just say the most insane shit to people, you know. And that's that's he's on panel on Kill Tony. No, he was he became a kill Tony regular, and you mean now performing he's performing or on panel performing. Okay, and now he is what they call a kill Tony uh, Hall of Famer, which is Got amazing. It. Okay, okay. So, and, and this is it. So David Lucas does this video where he basically starts going off on George Floyd. And, or or going off on George Floyd. I can play it if you want that part. Yeah, if you want to play it, you we'll can play, play it. Just a little bit of it here. It's just a joke, man. I would have never kneeled on George Floyd's neck. I would have shot that nigga. That was. Uh, they cut out the part. Okay, so he goes. Uh, some people were talking, I guess, and he goes, "Oh yeah, you're you're showing these white people why they kneeled on George Floyd's neck." Oh, that's how it starts. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, something like that. Right. And then they everybody's like, that ain't right, man. That ain't right. Yeah, that ain't and right. Then you end up here. And we get here. It's too long. <laughs> oh my god. I think I just canceled the rest of my black fans. Those group nigga. Man, you up here making us look. See dude. I've been to Minnesota and I went in the gas station and I asked them niggas to let me see that fake twenty. <laughs> this night is a disaster. We don't do refunds, big dog. Appreciate you, though, bro. That leather jacket fires up. Well, he got it. Can I ask you? Do they always shoot these with like multiple cameras? These, that, this these is how he sets? make. This is how he makes it. He br oh, he shoot. In. He has his own camera. Yeah, he comes shoots out. Everything. Okay. He comes out and shoots you. everything because that's multiple his cameras. Though. That's got... his YouTube. That's wild. Okay. That's where we are. Comedy. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's, I didn't that's pistols, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he put the hat on, nigga. Goddamn right, nigga. And they gonna slap me then smoke a camel. <laughs> It's called comedy, nigga. You you really stoop low to put the outfit on, nigga. You look you look like you drive a yellow taxi cab, nigga. Your ass. <laughs> okay, he'll get up out of there, nigga. How many more black fans I gotta hear that might leave? Oh, good shit, man. I got I got. Cause nigga, I was just warming up with that George Floyd shit. You ready to go? All right, baby. Okay. I can white tell you people, voted for Biden. White people's nipples rock hard right now. They love this. All right, get out of there, baby. Come on, come on. Don't make it a big deal. Come on, baby. You already bought that VIP ticket, bitch. I got that $42. <laughs> <laughs> Buy a T-shirt on the way out, too. I got a Make America Roast Again shirt in the style of Trump. If your friends having a good time, don't make them leave because you upset about a nigga you didn't know. <laughs> I ain't know that nigga. I ain't got no feelings about him. Come through the front like that nigga. We want to see your outfit too, bitch. Fuck it. <laughs> Put on a fashion show. Come on, baby. Escort her this way. I got to see the outfit, man. Baby, how did you find me, sweetheart? I gotta wait till you, huh? This is a mess. You know, I gotta fight the audience tonight, nigga. Fuck this shit. This. <laughs> if comedy was a video game, nigga, this is the last level. <laughs> this is the last level of comedy the video game. We don't made these niggas upset. Hey, baby, next week I'm performing at a KKK rally. It's a good. It, 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 he's fast. He's obviously. It's just a joke, fast. man. I would have never. All right.
It's a it's a fast joke. Oh, he's he's confident, dude. He's got the confidence on stage. That's that's so much, man. Yeah, and he he's very fast. You can get over now. With here's stuff the thing, that dude. Work I I I am always gonna stay like this is. I'm gonna be honest with you. I've been on both sides of this. And what do I mean by both? So go down to go now. Go to his his thing. This is it. Okay, go down to where he talks. Can we play it? Yeah. Okay. Hi. Should I read that above there first? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, no, no. This is Chrissy Mayer's take. Let's okay. hear him, and okay. then we'll go to her take. So this is something he posted to Instagram. Yeah. Looks like. Okay, here we go. Comedian David Lucas. Uh, you know me from Kill Tony and other various road shows. Uh, I'm an edgy, uh, push the boundary comedian. And uh, my job as a comedian is to bring humor in dire situations. With that being said, there's a clip that is circulating around social media. Stop. And, stop. Um, stop. And that's the funny thing. There's a clip. Your clip. Yeah, that I put like, out. Stop <laughs> acting like somehow that got out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love you, David. Like, <laughs> there's funny. a clip. So, no, I go. I put out a clip. Yeah. Go on. No, you're totally right. <laughs> Since that clip has came out, I have spoken to a lot of George Floyd's family. I spoke to yeah, Cal Wayne, Trader Truth, Stephen Jackson. And okay. uh, my intention. By the way, you just heard Stephen Jackson, okay? Yeah. Now you know it's gotten real, real, yeah. okay? Because whatever you think about Stephen Jackson, Captain okay? Jack is scary, dude. Yeah, Captain Jack ain't nobody to fuck with. One dog. of my favorite Bobcats of all time. But By the way, fun scary. fact. Everything came out Freemason, high level yep. Freemason. Dad was a very high level Freemason. So now we're getting into deeper shit, right? This is some deep, deep shit. And let him let him talk, and then I'll tell you some more information that's come out. Okay. Never cause harm to his family or make them revisit a moment that happened a few years ago. Uh, I'm a father, so I get it. I understand how his kids feel. I've spoken to his whole family and um we've came uh you know to an understanding <laughs> as to how to move forward from this and uh just want to apologize to his kids and everybody who was close to him okay oh so people are, now both sides are mad at him. We, we, we go deep homeboy <laughs> open your mind from the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Tim foil hack, Tim foil hack, Tim foil hack.